is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Get the Truck! Season 4, episode 18, which shall go down for all time as the finale of season 1. That's right, this is it! I didn't even know uh, until this week, but we decided this is going to be it. And largely, uh, the reason is because Francis is leaving his bunker in Hawaii. <laughs> and we don't know where he's going to end up. Apparently, he's going to terrorize the East Coast of America. And he'll have uh, no access to internet or, or his recording equipment for several weeks. So we're ending it here. That's true. I will be uh, in an undisclosed location somewhere. <laughs> in the in Washington, D.C. <laughs> are, you, are you on a mission, Francis? Can you, can you tell us? Ooh, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> that statement. <laughs> Francis, you are getting on a flight later today, your time. So uh, yes. you're several hours behind us. So later today, your time, you're getting on a flight back to the mainland. Yes, I will be traveling through space and time to, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to yeah, this land that they call uh, New York City, I've heard. Yeah, about. buddy. Yeah. Gonna see what that's about. Gonna see what that place is about. Um, but no, it's going to be great. I'm excited. It's, it's, uh, it's the first time in a long time I've been back to the city. And uh, oh, man. Oh, man. What's the occasion? <laughs> um, really, I just, I needed to use vacation time. <laughs> and uh, it's, I've, getting, uh, it's I've, in the, getting in the fourth quarter. Yeah. 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 It's late, late in the season. I need to you, get use out. Use it or lose it. Yeah. Use it or lose it. Really, really. Before it gets too cold to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking before we went live. You were like, what's... What's the temperature there right now? <laughs> like I'm not with ready. fear quavering in your <laughs> voice. Just not ready. I'm so not ready. I've got like long johns just in case. <laughs> I don't know what goes on out there. So you're just hanging out, chilling. Uh, yes. And then back back to Hawaii. You're not moving yeah. to New York. I that, mean, that's what uh, I was hoping this was. I, I'm not yeah. taking it off the table. You never know if I meet uh, some sugar mama who wants to <laughs> take me in and house me. I'd consider it. I'd consider it. <laughs> I'd consider it. <laughs> oh, man. Picturing just like a, a trophy wife. No, that's not the right term. Uh, I, it's I the would opposite. be the trophy. Yeah, you'd be the trophy. <laughs> yeah. The trophy wife. The trophy yeah. hubbend, uh, Francis, yeah. in that Upper Upper West Side apartment. <laughs> just wear a lot of provocative outfits around the house. You know. You know. <laughs> Man, my little maid's uniform. There's some, I know, there's some lucky widow out there. <laughs> if you're listening and you're in yet. New York, Francis yeah. is going to be here soon, so. I, I like a mature. I do. I like a mature lady. <laughs> right in, ladies. So with your pitch. Uh, Come on in. Five Troy, five. Uh, are you, uh, have you been to Hawaii? I don't know if we talked about this. Have you ever been there? No, no, I haven't. Any interest? Sure. It's not like, uh, it's not in my top 10. Uh, I'd like to go. I'm just not interested in that long flight. Like there's tropical locations uh, to the south. We can, I can be there in like an hour and a half. Uh, I like That's that true. better. Florida. It's just <laughs> long. <true. laughs> past, past Florida. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Lower yeah, I mean, Mississippi, rather, plenty of vegetation. We went humidity. to uh, St. Martin for our uh, honeymoon. And you know, it's funny. We never showed anyone the photos. We never like developed the photos. We never like did anything with the photos. We had a great time. Uh, I'd like to go back to St. Martin now that it's been like rebuilt. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. I've never been to Bahamas or Bermuda or any of those, but I'd rather go there than Ooh. Uh, 11 Go hours to Bermuda. I yeah. highly recommend it. It's so close. It is it's like a two hour yeah, flight. A, yeah, really see, quick flight. That does sound much better. Yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. I, uh, I, but I'm, a, I'm a big winter guy, so I don't need to escape the winter. I want to enjoy every second of the winter and then leave and go there when no one else is there. I was wondering where this psyche came from though, for Roger, that he's like so obsessed with like getting to an island. He wants to be yeah. on an island. Like, was that ever part of your dream? Like when you were pounding the pavement in New York City in your twenties, where you're like, I'm gonna make a million and then move to an island. No, and it's funny one because- One million. 
<laughs> so, well, just one single million. That would last about three years. One single now. million. Uh, the uh, it's so much of Roger this season is like semi autobiographical from like <laughs> the bars that he visits, the apartment. The, uh, you met a postal inspector. <laughs> uh, I mean, I say Who was so, she? You yeah, dated just, a postal inspector. <laughs> well, it's all like all the places he lives and stuff. It's it's all based on like my first year in New York, and it's funny because. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I brought um, Linus in for a haircut, and it takes fucking few, three or four hours. So I just walked. I walked like six miles, and I walked all the way back up to the Upper West Side, and I was walking around uh, where my first apartment was and my second apartment was, and that's the area where Roger lives. I walked uh, past Cleopatra's Needle, um, the yeah. bar where mm. uh, you know, he takes home that uh, rando, and uh, I was just—it was it really brought me back. But I, I wanted to like take photos of like here's here's his apartment, here's his actual apartment. Um, but yeah, I've, I don't know. Moving to an island, I think that's just. That was in like character creation of the first new game, Who Dis? You had to come up with motivations and I just wrote like, wants to move to an island. And that's become <laughs> such a big part of his personality. It was good. It, it became a core part of his character. Yeah. Uh, if I had to mention another improv piece that I am 100% certain is from your real life, it is the shower stall five feet from the bed. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that, was, that was true, wasn't it? My first apartment I lived in, I, I seriously, I lived in a, a townhouse that was owned by this gay couple and they had a basement. Uh, I don't want to say their real names, but they're very close to uh, Pizarro and Jerry. <laughs> like, <laughs> one of their names was an explorer and the other guy was rhymes with Jerry. So that's where I came from. Magellan? <laughs> it was yeah. and Barry, but I uh, Desoto and Barry. They had a bait. I basically I like moved to New York to go to grad school, and I was homeless. I like went to orientation without a place to live. Uh, my first day of grad school orientation, I was still looking for an apartment, and I saw this thing come up. Uh, so I went and basically they own this townhouse, this beautiful townhouse right on West End Avenue um, and Ninety Second Street. And they had a basement where they had converted a portion of the basement into a small apartment for like family that would come through and whatnot. And uh, they were looking to uh, make some extra money off of it. So I lived in there. I mean, Francis, I knew you back when I was living in that basement. I feel like I was there. Yeah, yeah dude, you familiar. absolutely were. And uh, <laughs> you would go down. I would like have to key into the building and then go down into their basement. And it was just like a regular fucking basement. And then it had this tiny little apartment off of it, but there was a shower stall in the living room. Uh, so you could shower <laughs> while watching TV. <laughs> God, that's so good. I was there on 9-11. I remember I like turned on the TV and I was like, fucking plane threw into a tower? That's crazy. <laughs> Hopped in the shower. Hopped in the shower. I was still listening to the news. I'm like, only in New York. Oh, and then I fucking yeah. walked to a class. And it was on that walk that the other tower hit. And it was Holy like, shit. I got there. I'm like, why are people out? What is going on? Oh, uh, but yeah, I was living in that apartment. Uh, wow. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Sid, your first apartment in New York. Was it uh, a lavish, nice, your parents bought you a, a, a penthouse? <laughs> Upper East Side. <laughs> Actually, it was on the Upper East Side. And you're like, oh, Upper Ooh. East Side. My mom used to live on the Upper East Side. She wishes that she had kept her apartment because God knows what the rent would be now. I think she was paying 300, 400, you know? What? When she got it, she was like, it was 230. And I was like, can I what? afford this? Oh. But she was like, you should live on the Upper East Side. It's a good neighborhood. I live there. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I moved to the Upper East Side and I lived on 90th and 1st with a roommate in a junior one bedroom, which is what they call <laughs> a studio that has a hallway to where your bathroom is. So we had bunk beds in a hallway and then our <laughs> living room was like a couch. And then off of the living room was this tiny little like cutout, which was our fridge and our sink. So I lived in this <laughs> true shoe, but it was so fucking small with my cat and my roommate. And uh, it was fine. It was not a bad apartment. <laughs> it was a good first apartment, but also the Upper East Side, anybody who moves to the city, I feel like that is the trajectory. It's like you move to the Upper East Side and then you leave immediately yeah. because yeah. it's <laughs> nannies, it it's rich families, nannies right. and dogs and babies. And there's no bars, and there's no one your age. And you walk mm. outside and immediately you're just hit with the feeling of like, I do not belong here. Why am I here? <laughs> if you want to see the long-term effects of plastic surgery, it's a great place to hang out. <laughs> yeah, I should say the elderly are very interesting looking up there as well. 
Oh, but uh, I used to walk to class at Hunter College, and I was too poor for the subway, so I would walk from 90th down to 68th every day. I know Lexington Ave, like the back of my hand. But uh, yeah, it was a good first apartment, and then I quickly moved to Hell's Kitchen with four roommates. We had a two-bedroom, and I lived in another shoebox in a hallway between the two rooms. I was like in the middle room. You had to walk through my room to get to the bathroom or to get to the kitchen. Uh, and then after that, I went to Brooklyn, and I never looked back. Never looked back. Yep. Nice. The, if we ever made this into a TV show, which it should be, <laughs> it would be so good as a TV show. It's I totally. would be adamant that the apartments must be like real New York apartments. Because <laughs> oh, I yeah. hate how they do it in television. God, yeah. It's so unbelievably wrong and unrealistic. These like no way. early 20 somethings with like a living room the size of a suburban house. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, it does not exist. Yeah. I, didn't have like, a, I didn't have a full size bed until I was 21, I think. I just had twin beds, only twin beds. <laughs> Insane. Do you know how hard it is to invite someone over to your twin bed? As an okay. adult, like you're 20, you're pretty, yeah. you're like an adult and you're like, want to come back to my place? It's a, it's a twin bed. <laughs> it's a twin bed. We can hook up, but you can't Welcome sleep. To my bed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I so, slept with a mattress on the floor for a very long time. That's yeah. men, men do that. Boys yeah, get so away with like, that. They're like, can, heads on the floor. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going good. good job done. <laughs> I live like a heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> That's attractive, right? Weren't you worried your mattress was going to get wet from the shower because it was on the floor? <laughs> These were later apartments. <laughs> Hey, you want to come uh, home, check out uh, my place? Uh, let me ask you a question first. You like the movie Train Spotting? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the decorations of my apartment are inspired by Train Spotting. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm sort of going. And if you for. look up, you can see a baby. See a little, little baby up there. How adorable is that? <laughs> well, as I said, we're going to get into it here. We're going to get into the season finale of part one of uh, of Impossible Landscapes. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to go. Uh, we're going to, we're going to wait and see. I believe we started this. I should have looked this up. I never do. I always think about it live when we go. Uh, I, I think we started on Tuesday. Uh, yes, we did. We started on Tuesday, August 15th, and, uh, we're about to start back on Monday. So it hasn't even been a week. These yeah. events uh, hasn't even been a week, but as we know, these intense times bring people closer together super, super fast. And um, we pack a lot into a day here at the Glass Cannon Network in our role playing <laughs> games. We pack a lot into a day. Every hour is pinpointed with plot relevant work that is done by the PCs. Uh, <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are you surprised that none of us know what to do? <laughs> no, not like, at all. No. I'm surprised they don't really have any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. What a, Maybe I've better. mishandled this situation. <laughs> other, than, other than kill. Yeah, do you blame than, yourself? Yeah, that's what we're really trying oh, to get oh, at. We yeah, were talking before you while you were in the bathroom. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do blame myself, but I mean, there's really only so much you can do. Like, there's it's a very fine line before you cross over into telling the players what to do. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And oh, yeah. and I, I do stress that truly there there is no thing to do, like to tell the players to do that is correct. Um, there is no you know, I think that that's the larger scope thing about Delta Green, that like even after playing this many years now, it's been a couple years that it, it doesn't seem to sink in for everybody. I think it sinks in for me because I'm always reading these things. But like the primary thing that makes it so different from Call of Cthulhu outside of the mechanics is that you don't solve mysteries in Delta Green. You, you just don't. What you do is you effectively- you specific problems. Yeah, you just, you execute trying to eliminate any uh, appearance of the unnatural in the world around you. And even if the solution that you come up with is uh, uh, flawed or temporary, it is far better than trying to learn more about mm -hmm. the cosmic horror that surrounds <laughs> yeah. us every day. Um, <laughs> because doing so not only risks your sanity, but probably more importantly, it risks this, the relationships of everyone in your life, all of your loved ones. 
learning more about this only puts you on a path to destroying your life is essentially what the the game tries to tell you. And this is in the first pages of the handlers guy. I'm sorry, the first pages of the uh, agent's handbook. You know, it says it's it's not about guns, it's not about figuring everything out. It's about survival and and trying to maintain your love the loved ones and relationships that you have in your life while also combating and a force that is impossible to defeat, right? So it's, um, uh, to me, it creates great stories. But in the end, as an RPG, as a, as a game master, there's no right answer and there's also no real way to, to give it to you. All I can do is just drop hints and drop evidence. And if there's anything I've learned from playing both Delta Green and Call of Cthulhu, it's that I also forget all evidence the minute the session is over. <laughs> um, but if, if, if I walked you through all of the evidence, you would have a much clearer idea of, of what's going on, but I'd have to walk you through it in, in a way that I see it that is just unfair. Like I, I see how it all connects much easier. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't, no, it doesn't surprise me at all that you're unsure of what to do. And in a normal game, this wouldn't be an issue in the least, but we have, you know, production schedules and stuff like that. And we fit into a certain amount of episodes. Like that box makes it uh, a little, where things are a little bit more pressured. That's all. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're coming up to the end. And, and all that I really want from you is decisiveness, you know, uh, just sort of lingering around and not addressing it. That That is, that's just bad play. You know, no matter what the system is, you need to just make a decision and go with it. And whatever that is, we'll deal with. And there is no wrong answer. And the story will continue in season two. So, uh, well, season five, technically. Uh, I, I think I said season one multiple times today. I, I meant part <laughs> one. It is obviously season four of getting the trunk. So by way of a brief recap to, to let everybody know where we, where we left the players that kind of puts them, I, th I guess, in this situation where it's like, we don't, we don't even know what to do is uh, that as they left the night floors and blew off some steam and Roger and Vicky hooked up and Bobby was contacted by his handler and his handler says, you know, you got to keep a level head, get the job done, get that gateway closed. Um, as you guys all come back together, if I had to guess what, what I think is happening in a meta way, it's that you're, as players, you have breaks between sessions, you get distracted by other things in your real life and the other games you play, and sometimes you're not thinking exactly what the character just went through that you're playing. And to come together and be like, oh yeah, let's go back into the night floors. Like, I, I'm sitting here like, really? <laughs> like, I mean, if you could justify that to me, that's great. But like your character would have to, I, and I can see it with Neil, 100%. You'd have to be kind of like crazy, right? Yeah. Like you'd have to see, be that's crazy. That's why I knew to want to do it would that. be, yeah, it would mean basic suicide, basically. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I was just, I felt kind of stuck because it felt like the sort of natural kind of progression for where he is where his where his threads are leading i was like i don't want that to happen like i don't want to make a new character like but you know i just felt like that was that was just it, it felt the most or like the most organic choice for him so i don't know yeah and i and i i think this is another reason that it's hard to make a decision is because you don't have to do what the group does you can do your own thing but it's really hard as a group of friends to be like, well, I'm going to go do that and not do that with you guys. You know, to be like, it's weird. Yeah. And I yeah. get that. So I understand certainly how it's hard for Neil. But I also you, think, sorry, go ahead, Sid. Well, you make a really good point too, Joe, talking about like as the handler, how you approach the investigation and like as players too, we have to play to our insanity levels. So although it's like, right. yes, we want, we, we know that like as players, a good idea might be like, oh, destroy the building or do these like, like more thought out things but yeah skid for neil like as a character neil's hearing this voice and stuff like maybe neil is so deep in it that he's like no of course i have to go back to the night floors yeah like he loses <clears throat> sort of the ability to make a logical self-protecting decision yeah because yeah. of these other factors i don't know and yeah. he he got the invitation himself. Like he was the yeah. one that got the invitation to the party. Yeah. So well, yeah. we st the prisoner got the invitation, right? Oh, right. 
Wait, wasn't that a second invitation? Like Neil got one from the robot girl. Yeah, I got Neil, one. Yeah, got oh, one from the right. robot girl. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. I forgot that. Yes, that's so true. The invitation yeah, was for the prisoner, oh. but it's but hard I to deny it. that it was delivered directly to, to Skid. Yeah, yeah. To uh, Neil. The um, to the evidence board. <laughs> Give this <laughs> invitation. Evidence board. Yeah. Back, speaking of the evidence board. Speak, uh, speaking oh, of the evidence board. Should, should we bring this up? Or we, you yes, we should. Yes, we should. Troy, go ahead. What? When we were going off the air, we, we were we were in finished recording, and uh, our producer Ian had said something. It was like, "Hey, is is this an error on the evidence board?" And Joe was like, "No, that's just something the players haven't seen." And so I tried to log into Roll20 for 24 hours afterwards and could not get in. Finally, the next day I got in. And sure enough, when you look at the evidence board to the north of uh, the New York uh, Police Department missing persons report, there's this like thing on the wall that wasn't there as far as I know earlier. Do you it see that? It looks like a glitch, yeah. like almost like gum was stuck to the wall behind the bulletin board and it's glitching out. It's also very slightly, I, I looked very close at this, very slightly below uh, Michelle Van Fitz's photo at the bottom of the board as if it's there's some sort of something happening behind the entire board. That oh, it looks like that must be the yellow sign. Quite see. Oh, like I a see. black and white version of the yellow sign. Because if you look at the yellow sign over to uh, to the right of World Without Doors, it kind of fits that. Yep. Yeah, a point, it, a point at be. the top. Yeah, I didn't even notice that thing at the bottom. Joe so. is yeah. smiling oh. so <laughs> fucking big. Oh, fuck. Well, I mean, a look behind the scenes is I'm uh, I'm actually also technical directing this episode, which is a nightmare. And so I'm trying to show all this on stream while you guys are doing it. And I'm like, is this, like, this is look let's okay? look at something else. Scroll over here, Joe. <laughs> yes. And this also reminds me of that Hieronymus Bosch painting. Joe, can you bring that up real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Garden of uh, Earthly Delights. There's a lot yeah. going on in it. Let's look a little closer at this guy. Dig into that. You got that ready to go? <laughs> well, you know, I just, I think that, um, I think that it is, uh, let's see, I think it's as good a time as any to, to talk about this. Um, it, by way of that recap that I had started, let me just say that the, that, you know, perhaps even this conversation of uh, going back in you know, to the night floors. Uh, further research, we need more research. We need to know more. Destroying the building is not going to do anything. Like we, we need to, it's not really going to stop any of this threat. We need to dig deeper. We need to know more. Um, maybe, you know, this is part of the insanity talking. This is part of, uh, of Vicky's kind of losing it a little bit. And we see that, I think, partially during the meeting with Agent Marcus, which happened, <laughs> meeting. Uh, with Bobby, it was a meeting with, uh, with Vicky and Roger, it was a little bit more of uh, he, they caught him following them <laughs> and uh, accosted him or challenged him on the street. And we're like, why are you following me? And he tries, you know, he begins, you know, in his like sweaty, paranoid way that uh, the original meeting was broken up and we had never decided how we were going to end this operation. And I, I wanted to, you know, make sure that you were uh, not affected by what was happening in there, but you seem to be acting rather strange. And Vicky and, and Roger really jump all over him uh, because he's telling them. Uh, or he's telling Rick, Roger and Vicky that they're breaking protocol, that they're not doing things the right way. They say, stay out of our personal lives. Don't follow us. You know, it's a whole tense exchange between handler and operatives and and, and agents. And, and at one point, Vicky just flat out says, we don't, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Your own handler. What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> At that point, they have dinner together, Roger and Vicky, a nice dinner at Carmine's, <laughs> the Upper West Side. Uh, Family it style! It would have been nice. <laughs> you ruined it. It was tense. <laughs> Damn it. The bottom Agent ruined Marcus it. really did ruin that date. She shaved her legs for that date. Useless. So did Roger. <laughs> so did Roger. So did Roger. He was completely hairless. <laughs> oh my god! Imitated wax. his entire body. In the in the love scene, I just want to see like the close up of their two shaved legs, <laughs> the smoothness rubbing rubbing against each other, the effort. 
But that <laughs> night, Vicky goes to uh, goes to sleep and awakens, or I'm sorry, and uh, has a dream. She dreams that she sees once again. A, she's a guest at her own wedding, and there is now groom Christopher seeing her, recognizing her for some reason, walking down to her table and saying, you need to bring your friends back here. You need to show them all. And he gestures to the dance floor under which all everybody's feet, the dance floor is a large drawing, painting, whatever you want to call it, of the yellow sign. He says, you need to bring your friends and show them. Show them. And Vicky runs to a punch bowl that is uh, out for uh, for drinks at the reception of this wedding, shoves her head into the punch bowl in an attempt to drown herself to get out of this nightmare because uh, after what Neil told her after reading A World Without Doors, this is how the our, our heroine, Ab- Abby, was it? Uh, traveled between worlds. She consciously inhales the punch and then wakes up like almost choking in her bed and finds a strange sort of symbol on the wall that is too dark to see. She flips on her light and there it is, the yellow sign that says, show them, show them, show them, show them over and over again under it. And that's where we cut away. And unfortunately, because I was so excited at the image, (laughs) I didn't mention a very important detail which Vicky would know instantaneously upon seeing this, and that is that it's in her handwriting. Huge difference. She's gotta go. Something is happening to you, Vicky. It is affecting you, and you are doing things subconsciously when you're asleep that you do not know or remember. Um, how does she feel about that when she sees this in this moment? We'll stay on this scene for a moment. I mean, first, yeah, first she thinks someone has broken it. Like, that is the first thought, and she quietly, like, gets out of bed, goes toward her gun on the dresser, moves towards this this symbol on the wall, but then immediately realizes it is her handwriting, and there is, you know, the marker, paint, like, whatever. She sees that it is just out in the room. She had taken it out. She had done it. And she looks at her own hands and maybe, you know, there's even remnants, like it's still on her skin. And she's like staring at her own hands and at the symbol and she can't go back to sleep. I mean, these nightmares have been plaguing her. This shit with Christopher seeing her wedding, like it's already hard. She's going through a divorce in real life. But now with this element of this supernatural stuff, it's like painfully difficult for her to sleep. So she instead makes some coffee has a cigarette and uh, looks back over everything that they had talked about from when they were out drinking at the bar. Um, she said she wanted to do some more some more research and she's basically gonna look into how can I destroy this building without it coming back to me? She can't have her job affected, she can't have her life affected. Um, so maybe she's even looking at other police reports that she's worked on, cases. Um, in a database or in her files, in her own filing system of like, you know, unsolved. They thought it was arson, but it's not arson. Unsolved, you know, like that type of thing. Uh, And she's trying to figure out at like 5 a.m. before she has to get ready for work how she can just fucking destroy this building. And she also has to figure out how to get the stain off the wall because that's not good. Um, So that's what she's doing. (laughs) I think... There's also, there's an element to Delta Green training, which we've never done. I think that everything, for the most part, there there are some operations out there that are, that lead you in to becoming a Delta Green agent, but most operations just assume you're already a Delta Green agent. That's, that's how they're, mm-hmm. that's how they're written. And that's all we've really played. Some characters we've brought to the table and said they are, this is their first mission. Or they, they've been to three missions, you know. They, they already have sanity loss. I think part of the training has, has to be 
the recognition that sometimes you may have an operation where you are tracking another Delta Green agent that has succumbed to the unnatural and is now off the reservation and cannot be allowed to continue. And she would know this. I think so. I think it has to be a basic understanding of training. You know what I mean? So that you then, have to realize that ev- like, the yeah. preventing the unnatural from seeping into the lives of regular, average, everyday Americans is the top priority. And everything else comes second, including other Delta Green agents, should they become, uh, should they fall to it, right? Yeah. And in this moment, I think Vicky sees that she might be one of those agents. Yeah, so even more so, I mean, she's now scared. She does not want to be marked by her own team or by Delta Green. She thinks back to talking with her handler and, like, screaming at him, and she's like, it's me. It's me. I'm the one. Like, I'm fucking this all up. And for a moment, maybe she even thinks to call Roger. She's got his number, like, uh, her little note, and she takes to her bag. numbers, yeah. And or she he pulls out his number. His, yeah. And she like goes to the phone and she starts dialing and then she's like, what the fuck am I doing? And she just hangs up the phone <laughs> and she's like, why would I call? Like, why would she call Roger? She, he's one of her team. Like, she can't tell him. So she's really struggling because she can't talk to anybody about this even more so now because she is afraid that somehow it's leaking through her. She's affecting people around her and she needs to cover that up from her team and destroy this building. Like now even more than ever, she's like, we have to fucking put an end to the night floors. This can't be happening to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, that sign, for those that don't know, uh, you, sh- you you really shouldn't know. I think I talked about it in chat during one of the streams. I, I Somebody said like, I don't understand anything about Carcosa or the yellow sign. Like, am I, am I, how come everybody knows about this and I don't? What am I missing out on? And the, the fact is you're not missing out on anything and you don't need to know any of this at this stage of the story. It just happens to be that a lot of our audience are fans of, of, of The King in Yellow and that, that fiction and m- might have seen True Detective, uh, these relevant pieces of media that they've taken in over the years that give them some insight into what this may be. However, this is its own unique spin. And for those that don't know the impact of the yellow sign or Carcosa, you're fine. You're in the perfect place. The less you know, the better. It's going to be even more fun as you as these things unfold. But suffice to say, the appearance of the yellow sign is a dangerous uh, message, essentially, uh, from this unnatural threat that it means that it's pervading your mind into your unconscious. So you're not even choosing to be a part of this, but all of a sudden you're being called in a way. And that is a that's a scary, scary concept when you're a Delta Green agent. The average person may just be oblivious to it, but a Delta Green agent, it knows what's happening, and that's and that's far worse. Um, okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to the bulletin board. Since our uh, technical director, Ian, who's been wonderful this whole season running this show, uh, blew up my spot last week. I feel like we can't just leave it uh, out, hanging out there and not, uh, and not show the audience here as we get to the finale of season four as we come up on the finale of season four if i can do this right it would be amazing everybody turn your attention please to the evidence board and you'll see that everything that you've done everything that you've researched all of it you know there there's definitely the possibility that it is uh real and that it matters there's also the possibility that all of it is specifically designed to bring you in. <gasps> no! Oh, I can't unsee that. <laughs> no. Oh my way. god. No. Oh my god. Man. No. Hell. Oh, no. That's it. It's been under there Hell. for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, I don't even remember yes. when I when I did it, but uh it's been there for a long time. I think maybe the first time you found the yellow sign in the apartment. Um oh my so god. I was waiting for somebody to notice it or just like bust it out at some point, but <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> there oh you go. God. Pretty scary. Okay, Horrific. so also, question. 
Does this exist in the world? Is this evidence board somewhere, or is this like yeah? Where us? are we? <laughs> is this yeah, a room? I guess that's I guess that's the other thing. Ultimately, is like it is kind of uh, it is kind of like uh, what's the word? It's it, it it's in our imagined gaming space, right? Like okay, you guys okay. don't it's have a non, headquarters non, or a location. Meta. Non-diegetic. It's a non-diegetic. Non-diegetic. Board. Good word. Could you? And um, what's the origin? Could you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> it, right? Yeah, it's like know, something it's that doesn't actually exist in the story, but exactly. it's there My for the benefit of the audience. <laughs> My uncle has diegetics. Don't be <laughs> me. How dare you? Uh, if I, only Matthew I think were they here. give out books of non-diegetics at the subway, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they check your levels. <laughs> right. Check your levels. <laughs> you seem stressed. The <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. Let's dive in to Monday. Let's come up on somebody that I, I don't know. I don't think has gotten enough focus lately, but for good reason. Uh, Neil has been very strange. He's been very lost in his own thoughts. He has been devouring these books, these books which are... Um, you know, they're, they are a window, right, into learning about this stuff. But at the same time, if we d- dive into a world without doors, we know they also show you what happens when you keep going or when you try to fight against this thing. You become the thing, right? Like this basic narrative concept. And Neil is understanding this more and more. However, he continues his process of storyboarding and trying to make this into a, into a story. And we'll open up on Neil on Monday morning in Neil's apartment. We'll fade up on him. Uh, what does he do first thing when he gets up? I think he makes an espresso. <laughs> goes goes to his fancy kitchen and gets his fancy espresso. And okay, then I'm going to interrupt you right there. Okay. You get up and we'll open the scene with Neil, bleary-eyed, just fresh out of bed, maybe still in PJs, making an espresso. And you hear boom 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 on your on your front door. Okay. He cinches his purple silk robe and he goes to the door. So he was there. You open up the door. And on the other side is Fran. Your good friend, oh. Fran. Oh. Oh. Bright and early, Monday morning, she's dressed to the nines, made up her suit for work. She's holding something in her hand, a, a box. A, it looks like a, like a box of food, uh, like from a restaurant, like a boxed thing of, of food from a restaurant. She's got a big, heavy handbag over her shoulder, and she's like, good morning, sweetheart. And she starts walking uh, in to your apartment. I'm like, just sort of blown away that this is happening. <laughs> He's just like watching her go into his apartment, and he just sort of, follows her dumbstruck and she just yeah she just comes like barreling in and she's like oh my god i am so sorry that i did not reach out to you before i had to leave last week and she sets the food down on the counter she takes her handbag off sets it down she's in this bright yellow like blazer uh suit dress thing you know this like vanity fair stylish uh vibe thing her hair is done it's dark it's it's flowing down her shoulders um she's like but i had to leave town i was put on uh just an incredible incredible story uh i'll i'll, I'll tell you about it uh you know when when we get a second but i mean it was just it's really, it's gotten me more excited than any piece I've worked on in a long time. You know, I, I did that Van Fitz Foundation piece and it just opened up this whole world and I'm kind of getting into this like crime, true crime, New York City story uh, from long time ago and my editor is absolutely eating it up. So they they brought me back here. I'm, I'm one day here and then I'm off again up to up, upstate New York tomorrow uh, to keep going on this story and it's, it's just been amazing and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm working on it. Oh, 
Uh, I'm sorry. Do you have somebody over? And she's looking, and as your eyes scan down to your espresso machine, you see that you have made three separate espressos. (laughs) (laughs) Are you having somebody... Is somebody here? Just you, darling. Oh, well, I guess you predicted my coming. I've brought you uh, I've brought you a, a dish from Jameson's and she like it's like this diner that you guys uh, go to on occasion and she brings you breakfast. This, you know, poached eggs, whatever it is that Neil likes. Uh, she brings you breakfast. Uh, and she's like, I just wanted to run in and say hi because I'm just, they've got me so slammed over there. Uh, how are you doing? Are you okay? And he light, lights up a cigarette. Also, I want to say, for the record, this is not like her. And her energy is a little too much. Yeah. You know, she's not this perky of a person. All right. So, I'm okay. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Never felt better. Never felt better. Oh, what is this? And she's referring to your storyboards that are like all over the walls. Okay. By the way, there's something going on in the other room that she can't see. Oh. Like there's there's like a main room, like a living room that is, I, I want to keep her at an angle where she can't see it. Oh, okay. So can she um, see any of the storyboard stuff? Yeah, I sort of storyboard imagined. she can see. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, are you working on a new movie? Yes. Yeah. That's this. Yeah. Just something in the embryonic stage right now. That's great. That's great. I know you said you were feeling a little dried up lately. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. I can't stop. Are you sure you're all right? You're not really... You don't seem yourself. You're never this fucking chipper, especially this early on a weekday. (laughs) And she laughs, and she grabs one of the espressos and, like, sips it. And she's like, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just... I have spent so much time just working on other people's pieces and never getting to do anything of my own. And who would have known that this like total lame puff piece that had nothing to do with anything interesting would lead to this, this other whole uh, true crime vibe uh, story that I'm getting to do. I'm, I'm just really, I'm really excited that they're finally starting to see like what I'm capable of. And I, that reminds me I can't drop the ball now I gotta keep cooking Uh, I am going to uh, get into the office and I'm sorry I'm out of town tomorrow I'm going to Broadleby New York first thing in the morning and I'll be there for two days and then I'll be back so coffee later this week Broadleby New York is this a real town this is a well she just said it Broadleby New York I I mean I know I've heard the word (laughs) Broadleby but am I aware ask her where it is yeah. Ask her where it is. Broad open. I, it sounds familiar, but I, you know I don't go upstate very much. Where is that exactly? And she tells you where it is exactly. Okay. It's something that I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> near Kingston. That's what I always say when something's in upstate New York. Okay. There you go. Near Kingston. Oh. Uh, it's near Finger Lakes. It's near Saratoga Springs. So that's what oh. she'll say. Great. It's, it's way up there. It's up near Saratoga Springs, but uh, it's... I'm so happy that they're, I mean, they're covering everything and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm digging really deep into this. It's a great old, old New York kind of crime, family drama, murder, mystery, unsolved. It's, it's really, really fun. So this is, she, she was doing, she had, she had written the article about Michelle Van Fitz. Correct. And then... Did I know what she was working on when she was out of town? No, you just knew that she went to Providence. That's all you knew. She was working on a story and they sent her to Providence, Rhode Island. Okay. Friend, darling, I'm sorry. I I don't mean to detain you, but I have to know what it is you're working on. Oh, well, 
it's uh, it is a long story, but the, the the short, short, short version is that that Van Fitz piece that I did, she talked to me a lot about the building and her obsession with the building and it just it got cut out of the article they didn't find it terribly interesting it wasn't because really the, the article was all about her father and so it was really kind of uh this this thing that I, I kept bringing kept pitching and said look she's really into the history of this building apparently some uh the the, the original owner of the building was found dead in the, in the stairwell and the the uh, the son of the original owner hung himself in the stairwell and uh nobody knew who 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 did these things it was it was these murders were never solved was it a suicide nobody knew and this was like a real rich old school new york guy his name's henry lundeen so that's why i headed up to uh, providence because that's where he originally started his businesses he had businesses in chicago businesses in providence and so uh, i was following up there learning a little bit more about his uh history and then it also leads to some of his his relatives that live in broad Alban, new york and so uh, i'm going i'm going up there now to like you know talk more about it and I, I don't know if I'm going to solve anything but it doesn't matter as my editor says it doesn't matter it just needs to bring in the readers and if they are fascinated by this story uh, then then you know I'll it'll sell and she is just really oddly over the top for her for who you know her to be yeah is she on drugs or something can I can I tell that at least yeah no she is not on drugs she not is on- not yeah she's like Nothing's wrong with her eyes, you know, she just seems unusually excited. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, when are you, how are you getting up there? When are you leaving? I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm uh, driving. You're driving. Oh, I hear your car outside. Listen, (laughs) I don't want to keep you. Shut up! (laughs) She'll be out in a minute! (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> Listen, I mean, I just, I feel like we haven't gotten any time together, and I feel, I mean, uh, would you like some company? I mean, I, I I love NASCAR and Confederate flags. I'd love to go up to upstate New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's like, hmm, that is very interesting. I think we could. I mean, I can't tell my bosses, but... You can stay with me in the room and they'll never know. We can't get another room, but like, that'll be, we could do it. You want to do it? Let's do it. Great. Absolutely. I mean, I I could use a getaway and I'd just love to pick your brain about whatever this is that you're writing about. Okay. I'm leaving tomorrow Mm, after rush hour, after rush hour. Okay. After rush uh, hour. I'll, I'll, I'll call you. Okay. Okay. I have to go. Must go, honey. Bye. Bye. Great. Bye. 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 (laughs) <laughs> she grabs her big handbag and uh, finds her way out the door. Broad Alban, New York. It's a real place. I had That's no idea. A real Is it real? Place? Yeah. Oh shit. The hell out I didn't know. Here. I never, never heard of it. That's fucked up. It's fucked up. It's a place of nightmares. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he like kind of sits there, takes a couple of drags on his cigarette, a sip off the espresso takes a bite out of the poached egg bagel whatever and then he walks into the living room and what's in the living room and we just I see know. him disappear into the living room okay yeah, we just see him going to the- fade out um what does roger want to do with monday morning i mean i still really want to try and track down abigail's father um the other thing I wanted to do was see if I could... Uh, Sorry, also just wanted to mention, because I hadn't before, you have a meeting later this afternoon uh, with Agent Marcus. You're supposed yes. to meet him back at that at that deli, at the Starlight Deli, 5 p.m. to say like what the plan is. So anyway, that's right. that's your thing today, your booking today. And that's not until when? 5 o'clock, you said? 5 o'clock. Yeah, so I've got the whole day. Uh, two Which was really- at least four episodes of Get in the Trunk. Right. <laughs> what I want, I, I, I did want to see if I could track down uh, an address or a place of work for Abigail's father. And then I also wanted to see if I could score a tracking device. Those are the two things I want. This is what I wanted to do today. Okay. Um, I don't know how you would get a tracking device. You have to tell me and make it I quick. I go to the 
tracking device store. You know, I <laughs> no, I imagine I um, I try to use my Delta Green connections. Like, is there a, a way that I can? Uh, Bobby is a Delta Green connection. He would have access to tracking devices. All right, so maybe I'll call up Makeshift and ask if he could um, requisition one for me. But I need it um, before we go to the meeting place today. And what would you, uh, yeah, get on the phone, Francis. Hello? Who's this? Who is this? I asked you first. You called me. Who is <laughs> you this? You called me. <laughs> it's Messiah. Oh, of course. Did I wake I... you? I'm up. I don't sleep well these days. What do you need? Sorry to bother you. Have you really? tried melatonin? <laughs> Find Thanks. that helps you fall asleep quickly, but not stay asleep. It's not quite strong enough for me. What What, what do you want? You're not my... I'm not your your buddy over here. We Last time you were trading insults with me. So what do you need? What do you want? All right. Cool out. Friend or no, I need a favor. And it pertains to the mission. You're a uh, man, from what I understand. You can obtain certain things. <laughs> Is that true? That's right. That's right, <laughs> God damn it! I need a... Uh, I need a tracking device. Tracking device? That's right. I guess, yeah, I guess I can get that. What, what do you need it for? What's this for? Don't ask too many questions, Makeshift. Because the answer might be something you don't want to know. All right. All right, I'm going in. I'm gonna get a few supplies. I'll, I can pick up a I can pick up a tracking device for you. I appreciate it. And uh, sorry if things got a little heated yesterday. We're all under a lot of pressure as this uh, mission comes to a close. That's that's fine. You're right. I I was a little on edge. I didn't mean to get on you and. Uh, uh, Maybelline about all that. It was just I'm out of my depth here. But uh, I, I accept your apology. I'm sorry too. Alright. Good. One more thing. And then the uh, payphone runs out and he doesn't deposit more change. The, the, <laughs> was that, was that, what, what was the one more thing? <laughs> Damn it. That's that's Roger, cheap and enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Um, okay. And then Abigail's father. So I was thinking about this, and look at your evidence board. Come on, do the work. Roger's not be... smart. Exactly. <laughs> he's, um, he's really not. What I, you I've do know it, is that Abigail's artist, father, Kips Bay. and you know that Father's Abigail's a, a father cop. is a cop. It's yeah. Cop. So, is there anyone on that board that's a cop? Detective Giordanda. Right. We met. Who was your contact at the NYPD who passed over the investigation to the FBI? Could you use him? Would you be interested in using him to find out where this guy is? Hmm. Yes. Roger has a uh, difficult relationship with the police. <laughs> he doesn't like cops. Right. <laughs> um, but. He knows it's a, it's a possibility. Um, if this, this guy really wants to help, maybe he'll give him the info. So I'll swing by. Uh, His precinct? Giordano's precinct. All right, let's just fast forward to you there, uh, him coming out. You, you know, they, you give your name, and he comes out. Uh, and Roger's just, like, looking around. It's Monday morning. You know, he's got a coffee. He's just in a, a button-down shirt, tie. Uh, and he's like, who are you? We met. Um, is there some place we could go to chat? Did I give him my name? Does he know my actual name? Or did I give him uh, an alias? You would give him an alias. Okay. Messiah. My name's John <laughs> <Right>. Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so crew of dummies. Uh, hey, yeah. Seuss Messiah. Uh, hey, Seuss Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said, well, we, we met. Um, I'm uh, Agent Minnesota Drumbone. <laughs> <laughs> and I show my badge. Oh. 
Jesus yeah, Christ. yeah. The the McAllister thing. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Right, McAllister. Okay. We, yeah, uh, yeah. Come on back. Yeah. And he walks you back, and he sits down at a desk, and it's a cube, and there's a few other desks, like, pushed right up against it. There's other detectives that are at their desk doing their work, uh, and he just sort of plops down. He shows you there's just, like, a folding chair sitting right next to his uh, his desk. You could sit in, and he's just like, yeah, have a seat, and he just starts moving a, a pile, a mess of papers around. Puts down his coffee. What's going on? Um, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but, uh... I was wondering if you could uh, help me locate um, Abigail Wright's father. She's a uh, right. Oh, he's he's an officer father. as well. Uh, yeah. I start flipping what precinct he uh, uh, works in, or what his name? Let's see, I think we had that written down. And uh, go ahead and give me a uh, what a charisma roll. Let's give me a charisma roll. Great. His charisma is five. <laughs> what about persuade? <laughs> How many points do you have in persuade? Twenty uh, percent. So actually, my charisma is better at twenty-five. Uh, we'll see. I'll play. I'll roll and then yeah, yeah. Uh, role play it out. Uh, Seventy-nine. Could you hurry up? I've got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> so he turns and he's just like, "Hey, hey wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. You were you were set up there to." Um, you were cataloging that evidence. You were uh, taking pictures, taking inventory of everything that was in her apartment. Um, how does the father come into it? And he's still like looking through his papers. W what do you need him for? Sorry, it's above the pay grade of a cop. It's FBI. You Just know what? I'm sorry. Name. I can't seem to find any information on him. <laughs> oh. Do you have perhaps a superior that knows how to oh read? My God. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. Can I speak to your manager? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing the failed charisma. Uh, yeah, I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> I know you are. Roger's just getting impatient. A superior who knows how to read. <laughs> it's just amazing. Just the year after year in this game, how mean uh, everyone is to cops. Like this is just hate. <laughs> Every so character liberating. you guys make hates cops. It's such a it's such a power fantasy to just be able to talk. <laughs> yeah, to cops that talk way. shit to cops. Yeah, it really is. What's so funny though? This this pervades the network because in time for chaos, they'll like talk shit to cops, and I'm like, "You're a graduate student. Why are you being <laughs> tough to this cop? Like Rogers, a certified badass." Uh, but uh, <laughs> just say, it's, it's also hilarious in this mission. We had the co the full cooperation of the local police and <laughs> yeah. we're given FBI credentials and we're like, fuck you. We're still like, <laughs> I don't need you. <laughs> yeah, and so he's just like, he's just so abrasive. He's so unnecessarily abrasive. He doesn't know how to. I'm happen. sorry. I just, I just can't find the information. And he opens up a side drawer and uh, there's a half eaten sandwich in it. And he pulls out the half eaten sandwich and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something, Detective. Do you uh, mm. do you have children? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, if something ever happened to them, and a FBI agent came looking for the father of those children, I hope that that person would be treated with a little more respect than the way I'm being treated right now. So I really hope nothing ever happens to your kids <laughs> and you're put in this situation. Me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your gross sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Roger gets up. Roger Threatening gets up. his children, <laughs> insulting his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> yes. The Textbooks. It goes so out. yeah, Roger, Roger will peace out of that scene. Uh... <laughs> Oh God! All right, let's go to let's <laughs> so go to useless. the useless. Um, <laughs> let's go to Bobby. Bobby, um, you're trying to make moves within to requisition the materials that you need. Um, and a tracking device. Now, yeah. there you can do that a couple different ways. You can uh, you, you already rolled bureaucracy on on uh, C4, and you did well, and you got the charisma check to bump up. You know the processing of that. 
Um, for anything else that you'll need, you have that. You can do official requisition, which you can be like, this is part of an operation and it's secret operation. Or you can do what's called calling in a favor. Uh, they're just different roles and they have different consequences, pass or fail. There's always consequences, <coughs> even if you pass. Um, yeah. you know, official, official requisition is more on the books. Call in a favor is more off the books, a little harder to do sometimes. Uh, but it can also raise suspicion. So... Uh, I will tell you that this is what's great about these uh, the rules in here. It's really detailed, and they have it right here. Under surveillance, GPS tracking device is listed as an unusual expense, which means that it it attracts eyeballs when it is requested. If it's requested in the right manner, in the right way, and the roll goes well, then like you're fine. If it doesn't go well, then it might raise some flags, red flags, because it isn't such a standard, easy expense. Right. Can I can I can I go back and retcon something for the C4? Is that is it cuz I mean the C4 maybe I shouldn't get Can I go back that? and retcon the RPG that I <laughs> yeah. uh, ordered? Yeah. Uh, I just realized a giant explosion in the center of Manhattan with C4 might raise an eyebrow uh, or two. Uh, but <laughs> can we can we like so let's let's say let, instead of C4 something a little uh, less conspicuous something that can be uh, disguised as, uh, you know, as okay, like sure. Like yeah, fire. you know what? Let's not get into it. Let's just keep it moving. I, I think that that's fine. I think that the okay. CIA has access to this stuff, and I think that yeah. you and I, as players, don't know what that stuff is. But yeah. let's just yeah, assume yeah. it exists, and it's some sort of, you know, uh, incendiary or demolition. He did a little like, research material. into it. Francis did a little bit of research. You did, yeah, some, a little bit of like something like a, a switch that basically can like. I hook up to the electrical system to make it look like an electrical fire, basically something, but but totally leaves no trace, just leaves no trace whatsoever, so that the 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 average fire inspector would be like, oh, it's an electrical fire. Went out yeah, of control. I should I should point out this was not research connected to the show in any way. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a, actually it was a happy coincidence. A happy I was coincidence. just happening to look at how to burn down buildings, and that, <laughs> that came not, up. Right. That came up, uh, but does. yeah, <laughs> that, that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's say that you get those kind of materials, a switch that would cause a surge that could cause an electrical fire that if investigated by a fire, an arson investigator, let's say, it would look like an electrical fire um, is what happened. Yeah, I think it's I think it's simple to say that I think an investigator would find remnants of C4, right? Like they would yeah, find yeah. remnants of plastic explosive. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And there would be some effect on that. So I don't want to get too far into that. mild interest on the part of the city yeah. authorities if Just a give it giant a C4 explosion were to go off in Midtown. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's 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 go down that road. But let's say you already passed that, all right? You did that roll. Okay. You, you okay. rolled twice well, and I don't want to penalize you for, for changing your mind here. Um, and it's not really changing your mind as much as it is changing the reality of the situation. Let's... Yeah. Uh, do you want to get this tracking device, and how are you going to get that for Roger, uh, for Messiah? Are you going to officially requisition it, or are you going to call in a favor? It's it's going to be a favor. I'm gonna. It's getting off the books off the, on this one. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be on the record for for Messiah's ass. I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, calling in a favor. Uh, hmm. Okay, so it's a charisma times five roll. Oh, okay. I get. I got charisma. All right. Uh, I think I got a fifty. And I rolled a seventy-five. God damn it! Seventy-five. Ugh. Seventy-five. Okay. Uh, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Because by the book, this needs to be a bond that has some sort of authority. You have to have a bond that has some authority in order to get this kind of stuff. I think this works though. Because I think that this goes through. I gotta call him Pops. Yeah, what's it? No, 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 no. Well, no. you could, but like I think that it goes through Mr. Kremensky because oh, I think Mr. Kremensky has yeah. access to all kinds of black market stuff that would be totally yeah. off the books, right? So you like totally. a call in a favor with Mr. Kremensky to get this tracking device, and because of that role, the scene we play out is Bobby. There's. You know I'd love to help you. There's nothing I can do. It's... Also, what's the rush? What's going on, Bobby? Are you okay? Look, uh, 
Nikolai, I can't get into it right now, but this this is urgent, and I need it. Sergeant, you work for the Central Intelligence Agency. They have everything you need. Tracking device is simple. I, what? I can't. You can't get tracking device from your own organization? This, this needs to be off the books, all right? I need to keep this quiet. You're endangering your relationship with CIA because my relationship with CIA depends on you, Bobby. I cannot have this risk. Nikolai, don't worry. I'm. This is bigger than CIA. This is bigger this than is CIA. What? What is bigger than CIA? The less you know, the better. Trust me. I just, I just need this right now. What is the news on my nephew? I'm still working on that. I got that. Uh, I got that going. I have back channels opening up, but it's gonna need more time. All right. Uh, with you, CIA is all, always needs more time. Always need more time. Okay, I believe you, Bobby. I believe you. Let me know when you hear more about my nephew. Goodbye. Click. He hangs up, and you reduce that bond score by one. Damn it. Uh, and that is. Um, and I love this. Pass or fail, you reduce the bond score by one when you call in a favor. Oh, which wow. Is cool. Wow. Yeah. That's, that That's is cool. Brutal. Oh, it's good to remember. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the consequences of the failure is you don't get the item. <clears throat> yeah. So if you want, you know, I want to keep this moving, but you could do an official requisition. You haven't, you haven't tried that yet. You could do it. Um, you've tried uh, to go off the books. Didn't work. Do you want to try the other one or just tell Roger, fuck it. I don't have it for you, buddy. I guess I mean if I go on the if I go on the books is that going to raise suspicion like who who am I going to answer to um, depends on the die roll buddy uh, all right all right I'm going I'm going for it I'm doing this for Messiah I'm going for Messiah god damn it all right ooh 56 damn it <laughs> but isn't it 60 56 under 60 it's a it's a bureaucracy roll Oh, oh, bureaucracy roll. Oh, 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 my bureaucracy is much better. Yes, it's 50. It's under 60. So that's nice. 56. Nice. <sighs> 56 under 60. Okay. Just for the sake of fun, I'll say that you are able It just, oh, we have one right here. And you happen to get it in a matter of hours. Okay. Um, and with your successful role, you have, you have created a phantom operation that you put in the official requisition for that if anyone really dug into it isn't a real operation and then they might come and ask you questions but for right now it seems that the guy that's working doesn't really care to look into the details he knows bobby he trusts bobby bobby's one of the good guys bobby's one of the you know he's the one who's rat you know ferreting out the the sleeper agents the right. the uh turncoats the within hunter. the agency the moles so we gotta trust bobby and he doesn't think twice about it and gives you a gps tracking device Nice. Nice. Okay, let's move forward to um, Roger again. What do you want to do with this thing? Is this for later in the day or is this just for earlier in the day? Uh, this is for the meeting. For the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what? If, let's go back. We haven't seen Vicky since, you know, the wee hours of the morning when she was a, who had three digits into Roger's number and just stopped. What am I doing? <laughs> That guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, she has tried to scrub clean the sign from her wall before she left. Um, she just felt like she had to do it. She was like, I can't leave that there uh, while I go to work. It's too fucking weird and creepy. And God forbid Christopher comes over. He breaks into my apartment because we're fighting and he does that. God forbid Roger comes over and breaks into my apartment because he would also do that. I have to start <laughs> dating better men. At the same time men. Christopher is there, then there's a murder. Yeah. <laughs> then you have like Christopher's body to deal with. Scrubbing, <laughs> thinking about all of this. Um, so she tries to scrub it clean and then she looks at her watch and she's like, oh fuck. And she has to go to work um, and she's going to be late. So she goes to work, has to show face Monday morning um, and is just really trying to hold it together and keep calm and focus on her work until about like noon uh, and she's going to be like I don't really feel well um, you don't feel well because you smell 
so strongly in your cubicle the smell of blood and human remains. And it's like nauseating to you. <laughs> and you know that some you know that this is unnatural. You yeah. know that these things are happening to you now. Roll a sanity check. Roll a sanity check right now. Roll it. Ooh. Roll it. <laughs> Roll it. Scary me. <laughs> <laughs> I need good dice to roll this. I gotta pick my faves. Get the okay. good dice. Get the good roll dice. It. Shoot Get the those Norse Shoot it. it. Shoot it. <laughs> Tits. Um, <laughs> 89. 89 over. Uh, what's my sanity right. at right now? So now I take another point. I mean, are you past a breaking point yet? Not yet. Oh, do you want to project? Uh, I'll take. Is it just one point? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the one point. Not doing. All right, so you take one point of sanity, and let's say this it results in you needing to actually physically vomit. Yeah, I think she does. She vomits into her little cubicle waste bin. Um, and Betsy or Kara, whatever the hell her name is, your coworker, <laughs> Rebecca, Tiffany, Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca's <laughs> like, oh my god, are you okay? Um, no, no, not okay. I'm gonna, um, I'll be right back. Uh, and she kind of holds her mouth and runs to the bathroom uh, and she comes back uh, and looks white, you know, just pale. Um, she kind of goes, you look terrible. And as she says that you look terrible, you feel like you're, you're going to throw up again. And at the same time, you feel this indescribable urge to draw the yellow sign and show it to Rebecca. Oh, oh my God. She's show like, them reaching for the, you think the waist bin again. Um, and she's kind of like holding, trying to breathe. Uh, and then she starts reaching for a paper she on her desk. She needs to see it. She needs to see it. She's like reaching for the pen and like shakily, like sweating. She's like so nauseated. Uh, and she starts to write it. Do I have to write it? Pal times five. <sighs> My pal times five is 65. So roll oh, and try but, to roll. But not against or my under. sanity, against my power. Right. Okay. Against your power. Yep. This isn't gonna be a sand roll here. This is gonna be you don't want to do it. You're trying to Willpower. stop yourself. Willpower. Sixty seven over sixty five. Oh, oh, oh no. my god, Rebecca. Oh, no. Bye, Rebecca. <laughs> no. You know you could destroy her life in this moment. <laughs> like, is there anything I can do? I can't You tell me. <sighs> what choice do you have at this point? I I mean, if I roll, and this is what the roll is, fair, but she's conscious enough to know that she drew the sign in her bedroom and she's knows she's writing it. Like she knows she is like automatically writing it. And I think she's gonna try to stab her own hand with the pen to like Ooh. wake herself, like, you know. Snap wow. out of it. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I like it so much, Sydney. That's wow. Intense. And maybe what it a works. Huge risk. Maybe it so doesn't. you just, you just slam. A pen into your own hand. Yes. Okay. Roll Damn. well. Take a point of damage. Okay. And you're just like, Grr! and you know, Rebecca <laughs> can't see at that angle, right down to yeah. your hand. But she's like, "What's going on? Are you upset about something?" I gotta go home. I gotta go home. <laughs> Rebecca, can you call somebody? Uh. Okay. Well, feel feel better. Call me when you get home, okay? I just want to make sure you're okay. Call I'm me. Gonna, I'll talk to you later. And she's trying to scrape the paper like into her bleeding hand and grab her purse. <laughs> <laughs> <And she's, laughs> oh my god! Holy crap! Oh, oh Sid, you are wow. crushing this. And you see, this is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> this is what happens when you are a Delta Green agent. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, you just you can't just like go to work and everything's fine. <laughs> <Right>. You know, <laughs> I mean, like bad things start to happen. I think uh, she um she cleans herself up in the bathroom, does a lot of deep breathing. You're like, ah. Oh, yeah, she pulls. Yeah. Ah, ah. I got this, like, right through the skin. Uh, ah. And it's got that ink stain in the blood and everything. Oh, and just God. nasty. Rinsing it, rinsing it, rinsing it. Um, And I think after she, like, patches up. Oh, now she has two fucked up hands. Because she <laughs> cut her hand. That's right. <laughs> Why does she do that? So now <laughs> she has two bandaged hands uh, oh, and man. she's gonna go sit in Washington Square Park and fucking watch the birds for two hours to calm down because <laughs> she is 
melting. She is, her brain is like on fire and she's going to go watch people play chess and think about her life and think about Christopher and just take a fucking breather before their meeting. Okay. And as you get outside, the smell dissipates and your nausea goes away. It was just when you were sitting in there in that cube. Um, you know, remember you were in there before you, you got called in by your boss and you saw a severed arm on the, on the, the desk. In this yeah. case, it was like you could smell that smell wafting into the, your cube from somewhere. Uh, so you get outside and you're fine. And Vicky just is like shaking and hyperventilating and then slowly starts to calm down, just like watching the passers by in the park. All right. If everybody's good, let's move forward to the meeting. What do you think? Let's do this. Let's do it. Vicky sits in the park the until the meeting. <laughs> we have no idea what Neil did in that living room. Yeah, he's None. working on he's working on a project. Oh god. <laughs> up until the time of the meeting. Okay. In the living room. An Jeez. unseen project. <laughs> this is so scary. <laughs> uh, Francis, I assume Bobby comes to the meeting with a army sized duffel filled with explosives. Yes. He's <laughs> ready to blow he is ready shit to up. Go. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this is like yes. the last season of Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys come into the deli and there's no Agent Marcus. Uh, at least when you you know when you arrive. We'll say you all kind of arrive at a reasonable time and He's not there. It's this small deli I described before, a couple refrigerators, a couple racks of chips and snacks and stuff, and then a deli counter for sandwiches and, and whatnot. And you're sitting in the back near the fridges, and there's a customer in there who wraps up you know, their, their sale, and they leave. At that point, the door opens, and Agent Marcus walks in. As he walks in, Oh, let me change the music. Let me change the scene here, change the music. Can I As Agent um, Marcus, say something uh, before you do that? I just yeah. want to have been somewhere in the parking lot watching his arrival. If that's possible. That is possible. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? You're just trying to hide. Hide. So is, is a yeah, stealth hide. roll? Yeah, I can do stealth. So um, stealth and survey. All right. So you are not in the deli yet? No, I would come in uh, minutes after him. Okay. Uh, and I failed with a 78 over 70. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> 78 over 70. Uh, By the way, brutal. Roger has a uh, impeccable history of bad final episodes. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's true. true. <laughs> That's <is> true. Like, <laughs> Rock so solid, true. and then <laughs> falls apart uh, in finale. So, like the fact that I failed a stealth roll is uh, our first here. Seventy. Uh, okay, he pulls up, gets out of his car, looks around. He's very paranoid, and then he walks toward the deli. According to Roger, he he didn't see him, but you and I know he saw Roger. Yeah, Roger's just not hiding very well. Um, Starts moving toward the deli. Okay. He goes into the deli. You, the rest of the three of you, see him walk in, and he turns to the, uh, he looks back at you, and an inquisitive eyebrow shoots up. He's already sweating over his upper lip. <laughs> he walks past the stacks towards the back, nods, makeshift, looks at Vicky, looks at Neil. Where's Messiah? And he's like, looking around over his shoulder. Cut to Messiah outside, putting the tracer on Marcus's, Agent Marcus's car. Oh, shit. Uh, you cheating piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to track the handler. Uh, now, where he didn't see me, where he probably uh, obviously saw me standing outside, uh, I would like to do this in a stealthy manner, at least, or at least attempt to. But I am like not fucking eighty six over seven. Uh, so I'm like, no! just I'm, 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 I'm crumbling. <laughs> oh no! I'm like fumbling with it, dropping it. Fuck that! I break Police it. Police officer <gasps> standing at the corner <laughs> of thirty second and third. 
It's the same one from your altar yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that guy was working up at the library. They got the same This guy comes. Guy. Actually, you know what? We'll make this a woman. This woman. Start, she's just standing. She's patrol, street patrol, just corner. Uh, she's working by the movie theater. She just starts walking over the Kipps Bay movie theater, uh, sort of near there. She comes. I was just there. I was just there with yeah. my mom. She comes walking over, and she sees you fumbling at the side of this car. Everything okay, sir? Uh, yeah. He slams it underneath. Um, sorry. I know this looks weird. My uh. My wife has a, uh, well, ex-wife, has a car just like this. I was, uh, was trying to see. She fucked up one of the tires. It's a whole thing. I, I'm sorry. I, it, it, it looks very strange. I just wanted to see what the tires This is not were. your car, sir? No, 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 I'm sorry. I, okay, then step away from it, please. Can you please yeah, step away no, from I'm, it? I'm, Thank I'm you very sorry. much. Thank sorry. you very much. That's all right. I, uh, I donate to the, uh, uh, the, the Policeman's Benevolent Association. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of you guys. Gals, too. <laughs> oh, my Evidently. God. These days. He's just fumbling you know, over Roll Persuade. <laughs> I love yes. making Roger roll Persuade. I can do this all up. <laughs> you lying sack of shit. 75 <laughs> over 20. <laughs> oh, my God. She's like, sure you do. Sure you do. Move along. Move right. along. And she starts walking along the outside of the car. As you're stepping away, you see her examining. She starts looking under for tracking devices. I'm just kidding. She just... <laughs> 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 she's like, like, Damn. Damn. <laughs> she's just looking sad. around the outside kind of for like any damage or anything like that. And then she just like turns back, makes sure that you're kind of walking away. And then she walks back to her post. And um, the door opens to the deli and in walks Roger. Marcus turns around. Eyes, Messiah, turns toward the proprietor and just goes, that's it, we're good. And you see the guy behind the counter walk out from behind the counter. And as Cumstone steps into the store, he walks behind Cumstone, nods to Marcus, flips over the sign, and it just says closed. And he walks out, turns around, and he locks the door, the set of wow. keys. And then just like walks away down the street. Marcus comes walking over and sits down with you three. Messiah, why don't you come sit down? Sorry, I was late. A lady cop was giving me the business. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Look, I'm glad you. I'm glad that you're all here. Uh, I'm. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm sorry about about yesterday, and uh, I think that that there might have been a misunderstanding here about where we're at. But but please understand that if if you don't trust me and then the work that I'm doing here, I I, I understand that. I, I get that, and I really. He looks over his shoulder. Look, I'm breaking protocol too, okay? Because really what I should be doing is, is I should be running this up the chain. I should be pulling myself off of this operation and, and, and honestly, you two maybe should be getting pulled in for questioning. But I think that we're all just a little on edge. And to me, even, even following those protocols up to the top, up to A-cell, the most important thing that we can do here is get the job done and get it done fast. Right, right. Makeshift knows he gets it. That's right. <clears throat> we gotta destroy this place. Cut to the chase, Marcus. What's that? I said cut to the chase. Well, that's what that I'm is... waiting for from you. I, I, I want to know the plan. We gotta get it done. We gotta get it done now. Today. Tonight. Now. I've got a bag of explosives. Ready to Puts a hand up to make sure. I thought uh, the less details you knew, the better. The less details about the what's beyond the gate. I, I don't want to know. But the more details about what we're going to have to deal with in terms of a fallout here, with you know, 
law enforcement and everything. I want to make sure that I'm briefed so I, I, I know if there's any anything I can do to help. That's all. Um, Roger looks to Vicky. It's like, you think this is cool? We're now as well. Vicky kind of nods at Roger, staring, waiting for him to to say something else before they give him any information. <laughs> she wants a personal apology. She's looking at him. <laughs> so what's so you're good? Mara, you're good. Make sure when does it happen? Uh, tell you plan so far, but uh, I would like you to apologize to Agent Mapley for the way you behaved yesterday. I'm used to people treating me like shit. You don't do that. Sure. Yeah, I apologized when I came in. I said I'm sorry. There was a misunderstanding. I want you to apologize directly to her and mean it. I'm sorry, Maybelline. She's surprised. She's like, oh. um, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now, are we going to wrap this up? Make sure if I'm sorry to have interrupted you. Please continue talking about your bombs. <laughs> <laughs> They're tell not us about, bombs. Tell us about the bombs. <laughs> These switches are agency issue. We can, uh, we can light this whole building on fire. Leaves no trace. They'll think it's an electrical fire. Cover our tracks. We'll burn that place to the ground. It's our only option. The entire building needs to be destroyed, and we can't. We can't risk partial dis partial destruction. It needs to be destroyed to the extent that they would tear it down. We think that that would um, prevent the gate, like you said. But there's no guarantees. It just it seems to be the safest option. Okay. Do you need anything from me? Yes. The only thing that I haven't really figured out, not making ourselves arsons is one of them, but I, I'm pretty sure that Agent Makeshift has that covered with the switch. Um, we can't have the, we can't get the fire department there too early. So we need some way to delay their call. So, the building's going to go up, but we can't have them put it out too fast. Okay. Uh, I'll do my best. I, I, I might have. There's a, we got a friendly. Got a couple friendlies in the FDNY. Might be able to... Yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. But, but remember, even without the fire department, a fire is very unpredictable and could do less damage than you think. Just make sure that it is a inferno. Okay? I have some heavy training Good. with explosives. Good. Shouldn't be a problem. Question for you. Are you at all concerned about the residents that will be remaining inside during this? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely concerned about the residents. Um, I asked Bobby about that. What, what, what were you going to do? Are you going to get him out? Well, we'll do our best to get out whoever wants to get out, but... Wants to get out? What are you talking about? Who wants to burn alive? That's not really the uh, option they choose. It's, uh, it's complicated. You're right, you're right. Look, if you think people have to die, then people have to die. If people can be saved, save them. Do your best. And you hear this, we hear this muted, like, do what you have to do. If people have to die, they have to die. And it's kind of like lowered in volume as we hear it mumbling in Vicky's head, who like slowly turns uh, her eyes down and you see Vicky that you are just like slowly scraping into the table a part of the sign just like <laughs> subconsciously uh, she 
canonically always has really nice nails. She keeps her nails red, like her lipstick. She has like acrylics. Um, and I think she even like has broken one of the nails from like pressing really hard. And that's like painful. Um, and I think she kind of like maybe realizes what she's doing. Uh, maybe not Joe, but she. Yeah, she, I think she realizes. She, she tries I, after like you've already a little bit into it before you uh, realize. And this is the moment we see you realize what you're doing. And she like looks down and, and like holds her fingernail back like onto her finger because she kind of like was pulling it off almost by pressing it into the table. Mm. Uh, and she just like puts her hands under the table and then like puts them back on top of the table to hide what she was doing. <laughs> Marcus is a little all over the place. He's, he's not seeing it, but Roger, you see this. I see it all. And yeah. she has two bandaged hands now. Yeah, <laughs> just like with these like mitten, Mittens. mitten hands, just like carving this thing into the table. Yeah, maybe Roger just like puts a hand on her knee and squeezes it to like calm her. Her knee is like shaking under the table, and she slowly stops shaking her knee when Roger puts his hand on it, and she's like, "This catcher's bit." <laughs> 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 he breaks her knee under the table. <laughs> 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 It's just this real heavy weight just goes on your knee. Thunder like security blanket. Thunder blanket style, yeah. <laughs> okay. And at that, Marcus is like, I'll, um, I might be there. You might see me there if, if we need it. But I'm going to go talk to uh, FDNY. All right. Um, tonight. Tonight. And he's nodding, and it's like a question. Tonight. Okay. Z- zero hundred hours, this will be done. Okay. He stands up and walks out, and as he walks out, he uh, comes to the door, and uh, he just stands there for a moment, looking outside, and then you see the proprietor comes walking right up, and just like unlocks the door, flips the sign, he nods to Marcus, Marcus just walks away, and he walks back in be- just behind the counter, and you guys are left there in the deli. And we'll fade out. Let's just fade out. And fade up on the night's activities. Um, when are you waiting until? What time is this all going down? Night gets dark let's at 8 it. o'clock. Yeah, yeah let's do it right at sun, sunset. Or sunset, yeah. It takes some time. Yeah. Right at sunset. Oh, Wait, but nice. also... Maybe a little bit earlier than right at sunset because, ah, but it should be when the night, I was going to say when traffic is really bad, just thinking to the fire department stuff, it's like harder, but you know what? He said he's got that. Fuck it. Let's do it at sunset. So it's the night floors. I can also pull the fire alarm in like two other buildings nearby first. Oh, that's a good idea. (laughs) Oh yeah. Wait, not nearby though. It's got to be like, not nearby, like a couple blocks away, you know, like overwhelm them. So this would be the last stop. Yeah. Same district, but different. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like I feel like Marcus wants us out of the picture as well. I feel like we may be Marcus's mission. And that that's what's going through Roger's head. He's just like hyper aware that he's holding back too much information. He is too like for a guy that doesn't want to know any information, he's like emotionally invested into this. And I think it's because he uh may want us like to in order to finish his part of the mission. We need to be eliminated as well. It, maybe it's Roger's just getting paranoid the closer we get to the end of this mission. Huh. Wait, and don't have a solution for it either. That is interesting though, just thinking back to like the other agents that we found in the night floors. Like what if that is the way that they just get rid of people? They just send them there. Send them into the night floors. It's all yeah. part of their ongoing exploration of this. I hate Marcus, why do I hate him so much? <laughs> hate One, he hurt Vicky's feelings. Two, hate him like a, he's so hate him like a cop. sweaty. Yeah, I hate him like I hate cops. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's just something unsettling about him. Um, you know, because he's not, I don't think he's a killer. But like, that's his job. And he understands yeah. what's at stake. It's like, we've got to go to. So yeah. that's why he's so nervous around us. Because he's known from the beginning that that's his end game. I could be making this up, but the... That's where, where I'm at right now. Just trying to justify his behavior. I have very low human int. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd listen to Roger about anything that requires <laughs> intelligence yeah. or personal understanding. 
I think that I would listen to him about the placement of demolitions. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, let's fade up in the building. What are you doing? I th- well, we should, Vicky says to the group, if we're in Abigail's apartment, which I assume we are because it's always like our home base. All right, um, now's the time to clean up anything that remains that we need to get out of here before we do this thing. So we've already got, we kind of covered our, our tracks, right? Is everything good? Everything's good. Should we disguise ourselves in some way going into this building? Because we've been going in and out of this building for days now. And surely someone will recognize us if we don't take pains. Are there like street, alter. street cameras and stuff we have to worry about? I don't know what the technology was like. Yeah, days. I don't think that that technology is is, is good. At, at, no, at but all. just like in neighbors. The, in the night. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we already had the cover of being uh, feds in the building, so we were always... always yeah, but they're going to see us again, like in this building, hours before... A big this fire up in flames. Yeah, I also wanted to point out people. that you needed to turn all that evidence over to the FBI. So we'll just say that that that, that happened off air, unless you don't want to turn in any evidence. But I don't see why you would do that. No, no, no. Yeah, I would start looking for it. Yeah. So we'll just say that you did that as well. Cool. Um, and then the apartment is now empty of all that evidence. Uh, or you know, there's stuff in there, but we have it all cataloged, pictured, and everything, and 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 inventoried. And. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to do a disguise, then just give me a group roll real fast. Oh. And, and how does that work? The person is it the person with the lowest disguise, or we all roll it? No, the person with the highest can do it. Okay. I have a ten. I think I have any. Yeah, I have nothing. Just ten. Uh, no <laughs> disguise. We all have base ten, so unless you have Everyone something has... added to yeah. it. I, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, I, I, I would have 30. let I have 30. I, you 30? have 30. I would I let Neil 30. roll art uh, if it was like, um, oh. what is it? Art? What are your arts? <laughs> uh, Makeup. Like yeah, cinema. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just like, this is like a. I like think, that, I think like, that that's this is, reasonable. This is a wardrobe kind of challenge. <laughs> I did an uncalled roll, uh, just velvet, and got a 10. Amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've got this amazing mustache on. <laughs> oh, Messiah, that's you? <laughs> See, I want to set I want to set us up looking like workmen, like uh, exterminators or Con Ed ah. or something. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Carry a ladder. Con Ed. Get into Con Ed. Any yeah. building. Ladders yeah. and tools. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Roll it. Uh, roll arts and photography like you're shooting a scene of uh, yeah. Con Ed uh, workers. Uh, yeah, uh, 16 <laughs> under 80. So. Oh, nice. There you go. All right, so you guys dress up as Con Ed workers, Vicky Ricci. Con Ed worker in her high heels. Bandaged hand. Pretty nails. The bandaged nails. hand, pretty nails except one. And <laughs> she's a mess. She's a and mess. And you guys get into the building. What do you do? All right, we got to distribute these these switches, all the breakers, all the breakers on each floor. Okay, so you go through and you start setting this stuff up, and uh, it is night. And as you set these things up, the building is quiet. As you get up to the top floor, there are spiders everywhere, crawling uh, all over the boxes. Still? <sighs> all Wait, over so the... there really are fucking spiders in this goddamn building. That was an hallucination, Jesus. Gross. <laughs> oh, this place needs to burn. They're all over upstairs. Uh, start stomping on them. Well, tuck your coveralls into your boots. Oh, we should have been fucking exterminators. We should have just yeah. told yeah. everybody <laughs> to get out of the building and then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just like fumigate. Are you knocking on doors? Yeah, I mean, what do we do here? I... I'm having trouble with that because I don't want people to see our faces and then say, somebody came and knocked on my door and told me to get out and then the building blew up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know the tenants. There are four tenants, according yeah. to the building manager's office. Unless there's a drifter in here. Why don't? And why don't you've we met just... one Lu- killed Lewis. Two of them. Two oh, of the Matt, four. We killed. Matt one. killed one. We Matt killed one of them. So you killed one. Really the other one, as far as you know, is still alive. Should we just oh. knock on the doors and see who's actually here? Maybe they're all fucking gone. Yeah. Yeah, and then I mean, I probably would... would vacate if my apartment building was filled with extraterrestrial spiders. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to tell them the apartment's covered in spiders. Yeah, we could also say that the night manager 
um, has asked us to tell you, to give you a chance to leave or something. You know, persuade them with their own crazy. Uh, are you knocking on doors? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you knock on the first door. Up, 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 up. Opens up. Young man, mid twenties, right down the hall from Abigail. Uh, can I help you? Uh, yes. Hi. Um, we. <laughs> Hi. Is there a problem with the electricity? No. Are you having an issue with your electricity? No, but you work for Con Edison, right? Right. Yeah, we were here fixing a wire. <laughs> oh, right. Uh. <laughs> we were here fixing an external wire, but we had to get into the building's um, box. But the thing is, sorry, did, I don't think you're the, the super. We're looking for the super, but this entire building is infested with spiders. What? Oh, no. That's what, that's what I said. I opened up. Did he say it just like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, yeah, that's what I said when I opened up the box. I was like, oh, no, this is... Not good. Um, the wiring is gone, gone to shit. Part of my French in there. Um, so we're gonna have to ask you to uh, leave the building. They're gonna have to fumigate. We gotta call in a few other people. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I apologize. Do you have a, a number for the super, the superintendent? I I, I don't know, but I um, I I know the night manager. Uh, oh. Sure. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, and what was what was your name? My name is Thomas. Thomas Manuel. Thomas, great. Um, yeah, if you could put me in contact with the night manager, that would be fantastic. We need to, um, uh, we need everybody out of here, basically. But yeah. Oh, um, fumigate. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. You can follow me. Uh, he's he's on the fourth floor. And he like pull Waka out of the apartment and just start walking past all of you. Hi, hi. <laughs> Good. Uh, Roger will hang back if they go and go into his apartment. He goes up the steps. Uh, Vicky is following him. Expecting I was just him heading up here anyway. To the yeah, night see, he's going to the night manager. The night he's manager. Going to the night manager. She goes, kill him. She kill looks, this guy. She looks at Murdo. She's like <laughs> making big eyes behind her. Like, are you, are you coming with me? And he's walking up the steps. Is no one coming with me? Uh, <laughs> All right, Roger will go with yeah, that. Forget. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so maybe no, motions to you guys. Check the milk. Check his milk. <laughs> okay, we go ahead. And... <laughs> Check his fucking milk. milk. Uh, he's going up the stairs. Vicky right behind him. We'll cut into his apartment. Open refrigerator. Milk expired. <laughs> there's all kinds of. Uh, uh, there's nothing in this apartment that um, has any personality whatsoever in any way. It is a completely unadorned, uh, bland, plain apartment that you would never consider a young artist in New York City to have. Um, it looks like a, like an Airbnb, like a bad Airbnb. Uh, it's clean, but it is completely devoid of any sort of actual person living there. And uh, we cut back to him walking up the stairs. He's getting to the fourth. He's about to go to the roof access door. Roger's there. I says, uh, what, uh, why did you move to New York? What do you want to be? Uh, a painter. I'm I'm a painter, currently working on um, uh, you know, a few different pieces right now. But um, but he's right through here. He's right through the smoking lounge. This Kill way. this dude. Oh, Kill him. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> yes, Thomas. Yes. Uh, that's a that is to the roof, correct? Uh, no, not at night. At night, this is the smoking lounge, and then the night manager right behind that. Great. And he turns and starts to go to the door. And Roger just looks at Vicky and says, don't, please turn around. <laughs> uh, and Vicky, Vicky just takes a deep breath and she says, I, I have this under control. Thank you. And, uh, and he goes to the door and he pushes the bar and he walks into the door and it opens up and you hear. Uh, so Roger's just like he's got his hand on And you his can gun. you see it, Vicky, and all of a sudden you are like, uh like it starts to the music starts to pervade into your head and like all you want to do is show Roger the yellow sign. Like oh more my God. Than anything you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to scrape it on the wall next to you into the into the wallpaper. She um her hands go like up. She's like a woman possessed, you know, like her hands like go up 
but she's not quite doing anything with them. She's just like holding them as if she like wants to do something, but she's fighting the urge to like put her hands back down. And Roger, what are you doing when you see her do this? She's like, I mean, he he knows that she's struggling, but I don't think he understands like the full situation with her. Yeah, but we're losing we're losing this guy, which is fine. I mean, go in there to die, um, but uh, I mean, he looks at you this way. He's What's holding the, the door. What's the move? Vicky is trying to reach for Roger behind her. Where is he? Don't go in. Uh, Roger's like, you know, he's, he's, he's walking up. He's right next to her. What's, what's the matter? She grabs his arm. Huge arm. Yes. Uh, and she just starts like <laughs> digging her nails into it as she's like looking at the door, like shaking. Like she just can't move. She just doesn't know. And he just buries her face in his chest and <laughs> takes his gun and shoots him in the face. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! It goes back and then shoop, the door just closes as he's shot, his body is shot into the room and then the door just boom, closes behind him. <laughs> oh my oh. God! He just holds her there with like all his strength so she doesn't have to see it. Oh my God! And that that <laughs> gunshot obviously deafens Vicky, so it's just like. <laughs> yeah. so he he said he was covering my head. He was protecting my eardrums. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you hear it. Are you okay? Um, Spiders are crawling up your legs. Mm -hmm. Start uh, shooting him off. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a crack shot. Vicky crack shot. is feeling better now that she can't hear the music and the door is closed, but she is like, like almost like a little like twitchy. Uh, and she looks up at Roger with like just wide eyes and she's like, okay, uh, okay. New plan. We do not, no more. We don't talk to anyone. you should go home. What? I, uh, I think you should, I think you should, uh, leave. And we'll take care of this. And then, no. tomorrow we can, uh, And she kind of, like, gets out of his arm. Out. You can't tell me! No! No, no, Roger, I'm sorry, okay? No, you don't get to tell me what I can and cannot do, and you don't get to tell me when I leave, and if I'm okay, and if I'm... <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair for you to do to me. Don't do that to me right now, please, Roger. I'm not telling you anything. Just offering a suggestion. I've uh, seen a lot of people who have uh, reached the state that you're in, and it's unsafe. It's unsafe to you, and it's unsafe to us. And that hurts her feelings. When you say it's unsafe to us, that, that hurts her feelings. And uh, she, and now you've hurt my feelings. Uh, and she says, <laughs> uh, and she says, I, I have never left a case. I finish what I start, and this is my, it's our case, I understand that, and I am gonna see this through. So thank you for your suggestion, Roger. I'm gonna go back downstairs, I'm fine. And she just brushes past him and walks back down. He watches her. He feels bad, he doesn't wanna push it. She's still the mission leader and he's torn between wanting to protect her and like wanting her to feel like she can, she, she's got this. Um, and then he just turns back to look at the door where they just shot that guy. And roll a sanity check. Uh, 33, critical success. Ah. Nice. Uh, critical success. You still like take steel. a point, a point of sanity damage. Wow. Yeah, sand damage, okay. 
Yeah, when you got this kid, I mean, you know that there's something wrong with him, but he's still like, maybe he was savable in some way. And, uh, you know, he's a 20 year old painter and you just shot him in the face. So it definitely affects your psyche. Yeah, in Roger's mind, like all these people made a deal with the devil. It's Rosemary's baby and uh, they got to go. Sorry, I, I should also say like you didn't. That was just for dramatic effect. You didn't technically need to roll it because you it's violence, so you auto succeed. Oh, but you uh, you just still take the lowest, which is one. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> What's Bobby and uh, so you guys find the apartment to be just like everything else um, okay. that you have found so far? So are you just like laying charges? Or are you knocking on more doors? No, I yeah. think I, I I just want to start laying charges because yeah. I think. Murnau has gotten more and more impatient like as this is going on and he's I think he's feeling like we have everything that there anyone who is here still is probably beyond saving and it's not worth saving them if it if it jeopardizes this mission so yeah he's just like let's go like he yeah. starts like starts setting charges starts breaking this place yeah, Bobby's on the same page. He's he's ready to burn this place. It's you guys ready seven. to burn this place, Vicky Roger? Okay, so who's rolling what? Uh, demolitions is that is that going to be the way that you go? Is there any other skill you can offer that might be valid here? I have a forty in demolitions, um, so I'm okay at it. Um, okay, could, could yeah. be better, but. Uh, you know, that's really only one piece of this equation. There's what you uh, what you brought, Bobby, is complicated and requires some sort of like electrical knowledge as well. Yeah, so... I can make things blow up. <laughs> so basically the idea is to set these all on either electrical boxes or in plugs if we can't find an electric, as many places as we can. So I, know. That I would say, Vicky, um, thinking like she has forensics and also um, criminology. So going sort of like a future road of how cases are done and how they kind of work backward to find out how fires start, she would maybe suggest to, to Bobby to make shift to try to put them in each unit. Because if something goes off, each unit would then like also spark. So she thinks nice. that's a great idea. Everybody awesome. pick one skill to roll for this. And then let's just see how it plays out. What if you want to roll your forensics, science, that's fine. What does military science do? Like military science land? Military science land would, I mean, it would it help you to identify certain military things, but really it's it's about strategy, military strategies, military you know, okay. knowledge in terms of movements and armies and how they operate and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's my understanding of it anyway. Okay. Yeah. And Bobby's got Bobby's got a, a 70 in criminology, so it's gonna he's going to go on that same page with uh, Maybelline to to think of the best places to set them so that it looks the most like... Oh, well, this is uh, interesting. Right. Okay, sorry. Sorry to cut you off. That's all, um, good. That's all good. Say it one more time. I, I just missed the very end of it. Uh, just, uh, I was just saying I'm going to roll criminology to, just to, to okay. piggyback of Maybelline's idea. That works. Um, military science, knowledge of military culture, techniques, and regulations. But then it also says use it to identify threats in a battlefield, find accurate ranges, recognize weaknesses in a fortification. Mm. There you go. Deduce mm. training level of a soldier or unit, reconstruct the events of a battle, or deploy forces advantageously in combat. Yeah, so a lot of it is higher level army stuff, but maybe you could do that one thing that like weaknesses in a fortification you know find the best places to start this fire so that it would be uh, hottest where it is most with the most foundational elements i'd be fine i've never rolled it and i have a 60 in it so it would be a good place to use it okay let's cut to bobby uh downstairs placing charges and you're in a you're in the basement so you had to leave the building to leave the building you guys never went here. You leave the building, you go outside, and there's an outer door down some steps into the basement. You're laying these charges in a basement, and there and there's a couple different rooms down there. They're all just cement and cement flooring, right? They're all or brick and brick flooring. I think it's all very like uh, drab and damp and unused, basically. But then you go into one of the rooms, and there are three canvases propped up. <laughs> And Gosh. a whole bunch of like painting, uh, like a whole bunch of paint, 
uh, buckets and and small things and uh, brushes and you know all of the uh, accoutrement of a painter or artist. And there's three canvases up on easels in this room alone, and all of the canvases are completely blank. Okay, okay. I want to roll a search. Can I search? I want to look around here. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see what I got in search. I got I can so for this. Got 43. Uh, 37. 37 nice. under 43. Nice. Searching. Nice. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I forgot this morning to have you guys level up everything. I forgot. Sorry. Oh, right. Oh, shit. Uh, so, yeah. Did. If that factored in at all, let me know. But otherwise. Um, yeah, Bobby. So you, uh, you're you looking around and you don't see anything. You just see regular paint supplies. Um, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but the, uh, you know, the blank canvases, you know, as you look at them, there is there is something like ominous about them like they seem it's so odd that they're perfectly untouched uh, as it seems and the longer you kind of search we stop for a second and you're just staring at one of these canvases and you think you see something there <laughs> okay what do i see i'm looking at the canvas i'm mesmerized bobby's staring staring closer Roll sanity. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, what am I at right now? Okay. Ooh, 41. Nice. 41. Oh, under 46. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> nice. 41 Ooh. under 46. Ooh. You get an eerie feeling, and your experience thus far is telling you, like, you don't want to see what is going to come out of this if you keep if you keep looking. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to set charges. And I'm the hell out of this room. So he turns away and he just starts setting charges. I'm, dude. Blowing, I'm extra charges in this room right now. Okay. All you guys are laying charges on every floor from the foundation up to the top, working around thousands of spiders to get where you need to be uh, to, to yeah, install these things. Uh, all right. Let's go around the horn. What are the rolls? Uh, we got forensics from Vicky. That's going to be a six under 50. Nice. Whoa, she knows her shit, even though she's very mentally ill right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did Neil want to do? I, uh, I don't really have any relevant skills. I don't think. Uh, yeah, like biology. Mm -hmm. And it know. makes sense, too, because Neil, you're like, just doing what Bobby tells you, right? He leaves the room. He's like, you just do this. And you're yeah. just like doing what you're told. You do not have any relevant skills. And you just hear a voice mm. in your head. It just says, no. The same voice. No. Okay. And he stops what he's doing for a second, hearing this voice. And he said, mutters to himself aloud, he says, not right now. And he takes a cigarette out of his mouth and he drives it into the palm of his hand. <laughs> drown out this voice in his head. You drive the cigarette into your hand and you see a shadow out of the corner of your eye in the doorway that, that of the room that you're in, that you're, that's like behind you and to the side. I look over. You look over and you see standing in the doorway a man completely clad in white clothes, white pants, white shirt, with a white plastic mask <laughs> on his face. Oh, the shit. guy from that picture! Standing in the doorway. Yeah. Roll sanity. Okay. Oh. oh, 45 under 50. Oh, man. One blink, and he's gone. Just I as stand that there. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I just I stand there looking at where where he was, just expressionless. Flex my hand a little bit and go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roger, what is your role? Uh, I'll try this military science land. I mean, I have demo forty military science land sixty. I'm looking for um, 
weaknesses in the foundation so that this thing gets the job done quickly. Okay. Um, so let's see. I, I just, I feel like I'm gonna fail. No, I passed 45 under 60. Oh. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, so you are able around, to identify, yeah. this is probably the, that was probably the most important role because you yeah. can start fires and you can make it look like something that won't be investigated too deeply. But at the end of the day, are you going to build a fire that is going to make the building fall? You know, and that's that's really a primary objective here. Um, no matter what the fire department does. Yeah, like maybe he uh, did basic with a guy that ended up becoming a demolitions expert, and he would tell him all these stories about uh, you know it's all about the found it's all about where you put the explosives. And so he's like he got way into it, maybe read some books, but it was never his jam. And so he's walking around this building. And it's so much nicer than like places that uh, his guys would actually blow up. And he's looking for these structural things. He's seeing the hole where the spiders came out. He's seeing that door where he just shot the guy through. And he's just like, here, here, and here. All right, <laughs> Bobby, what are you rolling criminology? I roll criminology. I got a 68 under 70. Oh, uh, barely my. Got in there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> barely wow. got in there. Skin uh, of your penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> that, leaves, that leaves Neil. Neil, are you electing to not roll? You're just doing I what mean, you're told. Intelligence? Yeah, I could do. Yeah, intelligence. How about, how about uh, yeah, okay. Let's do intelligence. Times okay. five. And times five. Uh, 35 under oh, hell yeah. uh, 85. 35 under 85. Wow. All right. That is four out of four successes. The yes. building Damn. the building is wired. It's ready to go. What's the plan? Get the fuck <laughs> out. Blow up the building. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So how do you trigger this? Is it one person triggers it from inside? Is it you, you trigger it while you're all inside and make sure it gets going? Is it you trigger it all trigger. from down the street? It's, how does it work, yeah, Bobby? It's, yeah, it's a, it's a remote trigger. Uh, it sets off one of the charges and then it cascades. All the other charges go up. Okay. So we should get out first and like leave some time Yeah. between yeah. us leaving and this thing getting started off if we yeah. can. So yeah. we con it and our ladders walk back out. Problem solved. There was one more apartment though, right? With a person in it? Fuck them. They're dead. Fuck them. Troy? <laughs> we got just no kidding. time for this. Does Roger want to do anything, Troy? No, it's just like, we're like, I just imagine we're all finishing up and uh, you see Lewis Post's apartment. We know what's up with him, but there's just that one more apartment. We're walking by. Do we see who was in there? to it. I'm like, I'm just taken back to being in the night floors, walking down that hallway alone and just opening up doors and fucking killing people. Um, so what are we, uh, are we done? We're ready. We're ready to light this candle. It's crazy though, huh? There's someone behind that door whose face we've never seen. And they're going down with the ship. Look, why don't you say hi? Oh, 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 Neil, you son of a bitch. You're dead set on extending this episode 30 minutes. <laughs> we don't have time for this. Everyone in this building Earth. is going down with the ship, whether they leave this building or not. That is ultimately clear. So does it really matter? I don't think so. Yeah, they made the their creed. choice. Neil. I don't know your name. Now. <laughs> yeah. They uh, they made their choice. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Okay. Are you gonna pull fire alarms in other buildings? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what we yeah. can do uh, as we're waiting for this thing to go off. Is go like, set off some other fire alarms. You go down that street. Buildings. You go down that way. Like we we just plan out a perfect radius. Oh my to god. Draw. It's like in at this time you pull this one, and then five minutes yeah. later you pull this one. But we'll have already uh, started this situation here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, so it's just it creates a perfect storm where they'll have to start bringing other fire engines from like different precincts over from other boroughs. It'll be yeah. a mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> okay. You start hearing. Vicky goes. You pull a fire alarm. You found your way into this building. Waited for like a neighbor to leave. Walking. Waiting, and you look at the clock, and we just see Vicky. 
and it just like makes this huge loud sound in the apartment building uh and you see uh, uh joe o'brien on the fourth floor with, uh, with an N64, and he's like, God damn it! <laughs> what is this? Who did that again? <laughs> Any fire alarm that's ever gone off in my life have been like, that's not a real fire, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Bobby. And now, okay, we start, we, we go to, oh no, we Roger and then Neil, and now we, we end on Bobby whose responsibility is it is to trigger the remote switch. And you start hearing sirens. You started hearing fire engines echoing throughout the neighborhood. And you're alone. Say goodbye to the night floors. <laughs> Say goodbye to the night floors. <laughs> <laughs> and we just <laughs> fade to black. And then slowly will fade up on son of a bee slowly will fade up on uh let's see let's do let's do something kind of nice i guess we fade up uh no no that's not right sorry we fade up on um i'm gonna do bad And we just see the entire building in flames. And there's like no sound. You just see it almost in slow motion. Reverberating against the night. You see like pieces of the structure at the top like <laughs> falling in on itself. And then like in slow motion you see fire engines like pulling up. Firemen jumping out. You see them, you know, plugging into these fire hydrants, you know, stressed out, just, ah. More fire engines are showing up, and this blaze is just an inferno. You see them, like, trying to get in, but they, they can't. It's like, it's too hot. They can't get in trying to save people there's there's uh they can't can't be done and then we'll fade out of that what does vicky do after this incident this is like the same night whatever you want it could be the same night what what, what do we see what there was going to be one more vicky scene what do we oh. see Vicky walks all the way down back to Washington Square Park. She doesn't know where to go. She has no idea what to do after this. She's kind of like stumbling. Tired. And she's waiting to feel better. She's like waiting for that feeling of relief to come. She's waiting to feel less anxious and less tired. And she thought it would be immediate. Like she thought the flames would go up and it would end. But it just hasn't. And maybe this is days later. Maybe it's like a week later. Um, I think she, one night, does call Roger to talk. And I think she finds a lot of comfort in Roger because he was with her throughout all of this. So they don't have to talk about it, but she's like, you know what I'm going through. So she spends more time with him, and I think, we'll see. I don't know, we'll see what happens with her and Christopher, but I think she is purposefully avoiding her sponsor and purposefully avoiding Christopher right now because they simply just would not understand. There's no way to explain what is actually going on with her. But she isn't drinking because she's afraid if she drinks that it's gonna cause worse problems. Like, like she'll hallucinate or she'll have She'll go to sleep when she doesn't want to go to sleep. So she's having a difficult time, but I think she's relying on her relationship with Roger for now to almost ground her. There's an eerie feeling for Vicky that she's changed in a way and she can't go back. But 
as she rests, she is actually able to start sleeping without nightmares, and she doesn't dream of the party. She doesn't dream of the yellow sign, and she doesn't draw it on her wall after the building burns. Maybe it had something to do with it. Maybe it's only a matter of time until it returns, but for right now, that seems to have passed. I think that's why she calls Roger. I think it's like the first night where, where there's like no dream or something, and I think she calls him to tell him uh, that she thinks she's like feeling better. You know, she's like, I think I'm okay. I think it's okay. It's okay. We're okay. okay. Are they? I don't know. What about Bobby? So one last Bobby, Bobby scene. Bobby goes back to his place. He's still wired from the night. He's looking at the bottles on his nightstand by his uh, by his bed, and he grabs one. It's a uh, depressant. It's, uh, it's something to take the edge off. Cracks it open. Takes three three of those pills. Chokes them down. And he looks into the mirror. He can't stop thinking about what he saw on the night floors in the mirror when he saw his father and he just he's staring at himself in the mirror trying to see trying to understand what he's experienced everything that he's experienced and why of all people he saw his father in that mirror he sits back down he's still staring at himself in the mirror he slowly starts to nod off nod off can't let go of that image of his father in the mirror. He just passes out. Yeah, I love that. We just see him staring and staring at this mirror, trying to answer questions that seem like they can't be answered. Just can't be answered. Until eventually, like a child, he falls asleep of just exhaustion. <laughs> Neil. So What's Neil in the fucking living room <laughs> dumps all of his costume stuff, all this the disguise. Uh, somewhere throws in a dumpster in some other part of town, comes back to his apartment in Tribeca, and he fixes himself a drink. And you see he puts on these uh, he exchanges his the con ed coveralls for a pair of like white painters coveralls. Zips it up. He takes his drink and he goes into the living room and time passes and you could say like the camera kind of like moves around. You see the storyboard of the film and like comes around the corner and you see him with a lit cigarette looking up. He's got this giant wall that goes like a two story wall that go in this like vaulted great room where the living room is. It's a big white wall and on it he has painted what looks like sort of an abstract representation of this endless hallway with doors leading down both sides. And standing right in the foreground is this <laughs> giant image of this little girl who is is drowned. Like she's got, you can see like she's got purple, like her, her fingers are turning purple. Her dress is soaked, sort of like she's like little strands of hair, moist, wet hair, like dripping down her face. And her arms are sort of hanging up limply, hung by cords up to some unseen, up some unseen anchor above her. And her face is, is a blank porcelain mask. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> Good lord. And his couch is facing this. He just leans back against his big leather couch, like stretches his arms wide across it, takes a big drag off his cigarette, and just gazes at it. Oh, man. Amazing <laughs> fade out. Roger. Final Roger, John. Now Maybelline's got me thinking. I think... Um we see now from Roger's perspective uh, Vicky calling him and him answering and uh, that leading to them uh, spending time together and it 
and probably, uh, you know, it's all a typical New York relationship. It's like a candle that burns too fast. It's like crazy passionate and like, especially after they went through all of this together. And so maybe there's this night that they're, you know, she, you just see uh, like her naked back or something. I'm, I'm taking, you tell me if I go too far, Eddie, but it's like in the moonlight uh, out of his shitty little window. And She's fully apartment. clothed. She's yeah. <laughs> her naked back, her naked back. I love this, I love this. She's go dressed ahead. as an alien. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, She's, what, I like to role play. <laughs> She's <laughs> dressed as Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> um, no, you just see that. And, and Roger is just kind of laying there staring at the ceiling. And... He's not, uh, he's joyless. And um, he looks over at her and, I mean, it's just this beautiful uh, silhouette of her body and he just looks back up at the ceiling and sees himself back on the plane and looking out the window at this monstrosity rising up. And it just cuts back to him and he's just laying in bed and just, sweating and now we see Roger later and he's uh, at the gas station on 96th Street in West End Ave it's nighttime and he's just staring across the street into the darkness of Riverside Park and the Hudson River beyond and he's still you can tell he's still wrapped up in this um, this memory that isn't a memory of his former life and as he's standing there, we hear like a car pull up behind him and he's at the gas station, but he's so lost in thought, he goes to light up a cigarette while he's working. And uh, you hear a woman's voice behind him say something like, uh, you know, you're not supposed to smoke near the gas pumps. Hmm. And Roger uh, like slowly turns towards the voice as he goes to light up anyway. And he's like, it's just an old wives tale. <laughs> But as he says, old wives tale, he sees uh, Norma sitting in the driver's seat of her car. And she's like, uh, hey. She peels out. Great Foley work. She's like, hey, uh, can you fill it up? And, and Roger just like shakes out of it and just absolutely just goes to fill up the 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 tank and uh and he's filling it up and he's looking at her face like in the rear view mirror from where he's filling the gas and she's like uh you uh you look like shit or something and Roger doesn't say anything and she presses she's like uh where you been Roger he just keeps filling the tank and maybe he's stealing like sidelong glances at her small reflection in the mirror, but he's not saying anything. He doesn't know what to say. Um, and then she's like, you know, when we met um, and had our night together, I thought about you and I thought about that night a lot after I came back to New York. And when you showed up here, I remember all my girlfriends telling me it was weird and creepy, um, but they didn't know you like I thought I did. And she's talking and Roger finishes with the pump and Norma just holds out her credit card and, and, and Roger like goes to push it away like, like your money's no good here kind of thing. <laughs> and and when, when he does, she, she reaches out and grabs her hand, grabs his hand and it's like, uh, listen, I know, I know you've been through a lot and, and I can't imagine what it's been like readjusting to this world and and whatnot but i'm here right now and i'm real whatever else you have going on roger it's not real so when you're ready for something real i hope that i'm still around hmm. and roger looks at her finally it's like the first time he makes eye contact with her um and he sees like his his past, his present, and his future in her eyes. And uh, still doesn't say anything. And she releases her grip, and then drives off. And from there, he walks 
a little bit away from the gas station towards this little overpass where like cars that are exiting the Henry Hudson Parkway can come onto 96th Street. So he, he stands over there and he lights up and uh, keeps staring at the river. And uh, he, he sees that monster again rising up. He sees the young woman with the bleeding head claiming to be his daughter on the airplane. We see flashes of a young boy opening up a box with a Cal Ripken jersey inside. And then he kind of comes back and he's just sitting there with that cigarette dangling out of his mouth and he reaches into his bomber jacket and pulls out the broken uh, groom half of the cake topper mm. that he got from Michelle Van Fitz's apartment. And he's just- Abigail's apartment. Abigail's apartment, excuse me. And he just stares at it. And as, as he stares at it, we, we close in on that cake topper and we see that topper now sitting on a cake, holding hands with a bride. And we hear sounds of like glasses clinking, light dinner music playing. We're at a wedding ceremony somewhere. And we close in on just a single champagne glass and see a fork tap at it. Ding, 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 ding. Followed by several other forks. Ding, 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 ding. Tapping champagne glasses and whatnot. And then from behind, we see the silhouette of a groom lean over and, and kiss the bride. Maybe there's like lighting on the dance floor that's coming up at them so we can only see them in silhouette, but it's pretty obvious that the groom is a big fucking dude. Uh, ripped. <laughs> ripped. Just ripped. enormous. Huge arms. Giant tuxedo. <laughs> Just <laughs> thick neck. I had to get a custom made. <laughs> neck yeah, like a Michelin sucks. tire. And uh, <laughs> and then after after this this silhouetted kiss, we hear the the crowd yell, "Speech, speech, speech!" And uh, and then we just see from afar, and we start to close in on Roger Cumstone. No sunglasses. Hair is like done perfectly manicured he's clean shaven he's wearing this custom made tux and he stands up and 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 grabs a microphone um and uh and maybe music starts to kick in and we hear this uh song play in the background as he starts to speak it's like i hope you never lose your sense of wonder <laughs> oh my god and roger's like well i'm uh i'm not much one for speeches but uh I'd like to propose a toast. And I hope you still feel small when you stand <laughs> beside the ocean. And he raises his glass, he's like, uh, it's a toast to a, a woman, a woman so understanding, she uh, she let me put the O's playoff game on at the reception. <laughs> we cut over to a, the bar and there's a big screen TV with the <laughs> Orioles game on. <laughs> He's like, what's the score? Three, two, O's. <laughs> Definitely taking place in an alternate dimension. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. 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 If you needed further ass. evidence, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not our universe. Yeah. There you go. Everybody chuckles. Everybody chuckles at this, and he's like, but no, uh, she, uh, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And uh, he raises his glass, and he's like, a toast to the woman who brought me back to life, to my new wife. Cheers, and everyone raises a glass and toasts, and we pan down to the right, and it's Vicky Ricci. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? Oh, Why you go too far? She's sitting there holding a glass of like carbonated cider and blushing. And then the music kicks in. It's like, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. And Roger leans in and kisses her. And as he does, we cut away and we see that everyone sitting in the reception is just a puppet. And there are, and there are strings holding all their arms up with their raised glasses. Oh my God. Uh, and it cuts back to Roger just smiling and we pan down and see that it's just a cardboard cutout of Vicky. <laughs> oh my God. And Roger's got this huge smile on his face. I hope you dance. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> it blacks out. Oh my God, I was not expecting that. My face is hurting from smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I thought it really was going to be Vicky. I know. Uh, I was totally uh, waiting for you guys to get together. Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. Blacks out. Roll credits. Season four of Get in the Trunk in oh. 
the books. What? Smelling up a log. I smell an epilogue. Smelling up a log. I smell. You gotta have a post credit scene. You gotta have oh, a post credit. I want to redo my scene because Roger broke up with me in his scene. I know. Dude, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I it's thought very that was unclear. going to be. <laughs> you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky finds a new guy, and he's even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> now we're No, I love. I love the way that this ended. I think yeah. it's so yeah. good. I think yeah. it's so yeah. good. It leaves. So many things fucking open ended, which so is the many. best thing about Delta Green. Oh yeah. my god! Ugh. Yeah, so many Joe, questions yet you, to Joe. try to answer. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, it's going to be a whole thing. I mean, yeah, next season is a whole new ball of wax, and and uh, we have a long way to go in this story. I'm so glad we're finally playing a, a campaign uh, in this. Delta Green. Yeah, this is too. just really cool. So uh, <laughs> I love seeing the characters after, and then um, and rest assured, it's going to be a while. I don't know when the next season's coming out. So uh, hold. Hold your questions next year at some point later next year, probably. So, so hold your questions on that and just know that like, we're excited to do it. I'm excited to do it. And, and you guys should be excited because right out of the gate, I mean, right out of the gate, we're going to be doing so much transitional stuff like between the Mm -hmm. two operations. So like, we're going to come back to these characters. We're going to find out what happens to them after this and everything. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really, really fun. Um, But first... You gotta have a post credit scene. You got it. Just too no. inspired by by Marvel to not uh, <laughs> with these things do do post post credit scene. Um, all right, so you're waiting, you're waiting. The the, the cast is talking. Ha ha ha! That was so fun. Mm. We had a great time doing this. <laughs> um, and you know you're just sitting there waiting. You're like, come on, come on, get me to the post credit scene. Uh, and then you see the credits stop, black screen, and we will. Uh, I had it and I lost it. And then we will fade up. Yeah. We'll fade up on a small, crowded bookshop in New York City. It's obvious that it's like an old school bookshop. So it's like kind of these leaning shelves with dusty old books all over it. And we're looking from the inside, looking out. And, and you, you see out to the street and it's the middle of the day and you see it's like Manhattan Street and you see passers-by, people just walking past. And you can see through the window that it had the word books painted on it at one point, uh, but really now it's just some golden flecks of paint that trace a dim outline of the word. The door to the place opens and a man walks in Tall, slim, late 50s, gray hair, uh, cleanly shaven. He's wearing a blue Oxford button-down tucked into khaki pants. And he looks around for a moment, and then he just walks deeper into the shop. And he, he seems to be all alone in the place. There's a, a desk near the back, but there, but no one's there. And he's just like, Hello? Just a moment. A voice answers from behind some stacks in the back. The man turns to look at the bookcase next to him while he waits, and the books all seem ancient. He reaches out and touches this leather-bound volume titled The Reputation Book. Next to it is another book called A Horse by Degrees. You're seeing these titles. How can I help you, sir? We turn and we see the proprietor of this place is uh, what appears to be a North African man. He is tall and meticulously dressed with a waistcoat barely containing a cartoonish paunch. He smiles and reveals a mouth full of yellow teeth that seem to match his jaundiced eyes. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, how you doing? My name is Tom Wright. Uh, And he pulls out a badge. I'm a detective with uh, Nassau County Police Department, and I'm working on a missing persons case. Uh, She may have purchased something here. He goes into his pocket, and he pulls out a photograph. And it's the picture that Agent Marcus gave you of Abigail Wright. You ever seen this girl come through here before? And the man looks, takes it in, and smiles again. Why, yes, sir. I believe she did. 
Oh, okay. Good. He puts it in his pocket, pulls out a small notepad and a pen. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all, sir. Okay. Uh, What is your name? The man pauses for a moment. It's Jim, sir. (laughs) And we fade out. And then fade up. On a safety deposit box row. Where boxes line all four walls. And a plain wooden table sits squarely in the middle. We've been here before. This is, this is inside Chemical Bank, where Neil first discovered that there was a box in his name that he had no memory of opening. Uh, it was box 3033. Let's have our camera just then cut to like a close shot of just the box. And that number <laughs> fills the whole frame, 3033. We hold on there. Then we hear a noise break our focus. Kachunk as a solid steel door opens and in walks the woman who previously had exchanged, you know, with Neil and asked about the key and all that stuff. Uh, the, the bank worker who was on the phone with presumably Jim. And uh, <laughs> she steps in and a moment later, right behind her, Dr. Neil Bachman walks into the room. He's holding a key that she just gave him. The replacement key came in seven to ten business days after he lost the original. She inserts her key into the box and asks Neil to do the same. When the both keys are turned, she pulls out this rather large steel box and sets it on a table, on the table, in the middle of the room. I'll leave you alone now, Dr. Bachman, she says, and she politely exits the room. Neil, what do you do? I set the bo- I kind of like set my hands on the table, kind of brace myself for whatever I'm going to find, and I lift open the lid of the box. Neil lifts open the lid of the box, and our camera peers inside, and you see a resplendent golden crown. <laughs> There's five seconds left in this scene, Skit. What what happens next? I lift it up and, and just kind of looking at it, like in the light, seeing it reflect off it. And the last thing you see is him just, you think, maybe subtly kind of moving it towards his own head. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> <laughs> crowding himself kicking yellow <laughs> oh my god awesome thank you guys so wow. much oh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you amazing yes so thank, you, thank you thank you, thank you Matt thank Jones you. everybody yes, contributed yeah. to this thank you Arc Dream uh, the, all the writers of this campaign it's just it's amazing it's phenomenal fantastic oh, I can't wait I'm so glad we're Continue. There's a continuing yeah. story. I can't this wait is going to gonna stick with me for for, for years now. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> I'm not going to let go of this. I love oh this game. I love this AP. I love this group. This is so much fun. So thank yeah. you, Joe. I just yeah. want to say thank, personally, thank you, thank everybody. You. Thank you guys. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, all you guys. Thank you, Nate. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. Good night. You'll never sit on the American throne. <laughs> <laughs>